Okay, great. And now we can we can start the meeting. Let me introduce Mr. Mr. Levente Poliak, that will be our uh, the moderator of uh, this uh, day session of transnational meeting. Uh, Mr. Poliak is an urban planner, a researcher, and a policy advisor, and uh, he will uh, uh, carry us in. Um, and through this uh, this meeting. Uh, please, Levente, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Barbara. And uh, I would like to welcome you all as well to the EU Digit uh, Conference on Digitalization and Public Administration. I'm really happy to be here. I have a long history of working with Genoa, and I'm really happy to uh, follow, to be able to follow their work on digitalization and on the on communication with citizens, with different kinds of stakeholders. This is something that I know Genoa has invested a lot in the last years. As you know, we will have a, uh, today's session until four o'clock in the afternoon. We will start with the welcome address uh, from our hosts and uh, the leader of the project. Then we will have a panel on uh, digitalization and public administration with the participating city statements, uh, feedback coming from the local stakeholder groups. And then after a coffee break, we will continue with uh, a panel on the dig digitalization of cultural events in cities with Genova, uh, Milan and Nantes. And then after lunch break, a generous uh, Marseille Genovese uh, half, one hour and a half lunch break, we will have a third panel on the digitalization of in European and extra European programs and networks with programs like uh, EURC and uh, EuroCities and some cities that take part in these networks. So this is our uh, day today. I encourage you to stay with us the whole day. This is going to be a very exciting discussion and please be active. So think about your uh, questions and comments. We have a chat uh, open in this uh, whole day so please use the chat box for any comments and questions we will come back to them and we will have dedicated q a sessions after uh, every presentation every session so please uh, follow us today and i would like to ask mr massimo nicolo deputy mayor of genova to give his welcome address okay good morning to everybody thanks for the invitation uh, my name is massimo nicolo and i'm the Deputy Major of uh, Genoa Municipality. Uh, I'm delighted to start the agenda for this workshop about uh, digit digitalization and public administration in the frame of the European uh, Digital Project. Um, our primary objective as public representatives of uh, Genoa's citizens remains that of serving our communities in order to create a better life for them. This workshop will shed light on the value of digitalization in civil life and citizens in several areas, public services, cultural events, and even tourism. Humans will use technology to improve themselves and create uh, the perfect human. Whether this will be for good or for bad, this is an open question. Uh, however, science and technology give us tools and we should use these tools uh, for the advancement of uh, our city. Digitalization has made uh, our lives easier, but the pandemic uh, has also shed light on the many inequalities deeply rooted in our societies. It's 2021 and we are still talking about connectivity as the main divide. So I think that we need to be more ambitious with that debate. We cannot improve what we can't measure. So we have to ask ourselves, how big is the digital divide? The digital transformation that we are living in today knows no borders and argue that everyone should have digital skills to be able to participate in building our democracies. These meetings leading theme, digitalization and public administration where the public sector aims at being citizen centric with solutions that are sustainable and future proof is something that Europe needs more than ever. Our goal is to provide infrastructure and service for citizens to have a convenient digital transformation and adapt to their new lives in the digital age. 
the future is not written, at least. It will be, it will depend on what we do know, on what we want digitalization to look like. Thanks once again to everybody, to everyone for the hard work, and I look forward to working with you all as we work collectively for a better future for the people of our cities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Nicolo. It is very important that you mentioned digital divide and the importance of inclusion, because I think this is going to be one of the main angles of uh, today's and tomorrow's discussion. This is one of the key topics of EU Digit. So please keep an eye on, 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 on this angle, this perspective, uh, when it comes to the, the presentation of the different projects, the different experiences, because this is something we have to uh, question ourselves about uh, all this time. So this is again another topic I invite you all to uh, give comments, uh, questions in the chat box as well. Uh, after Mr. Nicolo, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Gianluca Saba, Head of International Affairs Department of the City of Genova, uh, to, to welcome us as well. Thank you. Thank you, Levente. Uh, I'm very happy to, to be here today. I, first of all, I, I thank also our Deputy Mayor Massimo Nicolò for his uh, very interesting insights in, uh, in his uh, address uh, and welcome speech. When we prepare the topic of for this workshop, we thought about our uh, latest experiences in, uh, in this field in European activities. Um, this uh, EU digit project for us has been uh, the second step of, of a story that we started some years ago with another uh, project, Urba project, where Levente worked with us and where we met, the Interactive Cities project. Um, focused on the uh, how to improve the, the communication between cities and local governments through digital tools, social media. Uh, after this project, we also uh, created and animated, uh, and still are animating the working group within EuroCities on digital citizenship. So there's a fil rouge in the activities of the city of Genoa uh, with a solid political backing in this uh, in this topic so improving the communication and uh, um, focusing on the digital policies at european level mm, that is one of the priorities of the european commission for the next few years so all this uh, um, all these insights have been taken into consideration by uh, our team and uh, the um, agenda for these two days is, in my opinion, very interesting. So I, I really hope that uh, we will have a, a wider group of participants active with questions, with remarks. We will discuss about one of our uh, main focus in, in, in the city, so the cultural events and uh, the marketing of culture, how the digitalization can improve the pandemic has changed everything. Um, our uh, deputy mayor has just told that. But for example, our colleagues from the marketing department will explain how to make the most also of this uh, digital life to uh, make our uh, beauties of our cultural heritage more visible to the, to the citizens thanks to the digital tools. We will also um, discuss with some of our networks where uh, Genova is active, the International Urban Regional Cooperation Network and the Eurocities where, as I said, we have, uh, uh, we are chairing uh, the, the working group on digital citizenship. And tomorrow we will focus more on the uh, classical topic, but very important, especially in this period of the uh, digitalization on citizens' uh, services. Uh, we will host also contribution from the European Commission and the experience of our city and other cities. Uh, I think that the panel is, uh, the panels will be uh, very uh, interesting. I thank the lead partner from Marseille, all the staff and the partners of the EU Digital Project and uh, my team, Barbara and Sabrina, for the hard work they, they have done so far. And, have a good day, inspiring and rich of uh, uh, positive discussions. Thank you, Laurent. 
Thank you very much, Gianluca. And indeed, I remember Interactive Cities and I saw this as a, a very groundbreaking pioneering project to start talking about uh, social media and the role of uh, digital communication between cities and citizens. And in a way, this actually uh, foreshadowed uh, a lot of the discussions that we are having today. So it was a very important discussion that you started and also the general broad digital citizenship as a concept into the into euro cities as a working group uh, and now especially as you mentioned during the pandemic it's uh, i think all the cities were struggling with an ac accelerated digital transition and cities who had the tools and the mechanisms to deal with it they were much better positioned to make it a more equal more inclusive uh, transition so i really appreciate uh, Genoa's work uh, as you said a feel rouge about digital communication this long-term strategic construct of an agenda and also bringing your experience to the to the European scene. I, I think uh, we all have a lot to learn from this. And this is why I think it's important that you engage in uh, the EU Digit project, which is led by the city of Marseille, which is also another pioneering city that uh, puts the, in the importance of the digitalization and communication uh, with citizens, digitalization of public administration on the table. So I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Pierre Chalin, who's the manager of European affairs in the city of Marseille to tell us a little bit about how this project came into life and what are the goals and objectives and key achievements of EU digits. To the event, dear project, dear participants, it is a real pleasure to meet you today for the fourth uh, webinar of our project called EU digits. To compare with the previous events in which we were focusing on specific target groups, uh, today we are together to exchange on the way cities communicate with citizens and try to better tailor digital tools. For those who haven't participated yet in the, pro in the project, let me just inform you that the digit project was co-funded by the European Commission under the Europe for Citizen program. Uh, this project brings together the cities of Rotterdam, Hamburg, Genova, Cluj-Napoca, Varna, and Marseille, as well as the network of European mayors, the mayor.eu. Uh, until the end of 2022, or the beginning of 2023, our network will try to stimulate exchange between cities, local stakeholders, and citizens uh, with the ambition to improve public policies and reduce digital exclusion. The chosen methodology is based on the organization of local workshops in each city which allow the expression of citizens and the identification of good practices undertaken either by cities or stakeholders such as NGOs or businesses. <clears throat> Some relevant best practices or action will be presented to you today. Uh, today, the sanitary crisis still makes it hard to organize events. Most of things must be done online, but we hope that in 2022, we will be able to meet more citizens and organize face-to-face -face events, which has been just impossible in 2021. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you all for having prepared such an interesting agenda. Uh, dear Levente, thank you for moderating this day, and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shalan. This is uh, very important to see that, uh, in a way, your work uh, has been done mostly online, mostly digitally, and uh, we all have been, you know, withdrawn into digital life. But this is this makes it more, all the more important to find our ways to communicate and, you know, participate digitally. And this is what is at the core of the EU Digit program, because as you know, there are six cities participating in the program in a geographical balance, Marseille, Cluj, Napoca, Genova, Rotterdam, Hamburg, and Varna. And the methodology of the project includes that there are local stakeholder groups in every city. So they are actually very, it's not only cities dialoguing with each other, but it's also uh, citizens, all kinds of local stakeholders who give feedback and input into the work of the cities. And this is something that makes, again, a step towards digital inclusion and the participation. So uh, in this process, there are regular workshops uh, locally. So all the cities have their local uh, stakeholder group workshops that are focusing every time on uh, specific questions. And this time, the, the uh, focus was on 
besides you know the general team of digitalization and public administration it was local communication citizenship and the, the you know dealing with the digital divide so i would like to invite uh, first Marseille, the, the host of the project the, the lead partner of the project to share with us the findings of your uh, local stakeholder workshop and we will have 10 minutes for each uh, city which includes questions so please if you have any questions or comments this is the moment to start uh, thinking about them so Marseille the floor is yours And the sharing works so we can see okay. your slides. Okay, so uh, our workshop on local policies and tools to facilitate the communication with citizens and support the digital inclusion took place on September 30 in our offices. Um, we have been very lucky to come with the presence of six DPG Mayor, that was the first time. And all of them are concerned with digitalization. For the first time since the beginning of UDigit project, we were able to organize this workshop in a COVID safe context, which was, which was very appreciated by all participants. Um, 45 uh, attendees uh, who were elected representatives, civil servants, local stakeholders, and citizens spent a full afternoon exchanging on the topic. Thanks to a strong interactive work, short presentation, posted session, quick service, and games, all participants really open to each other, whatever their qualification or status. The exchanges were very enriching. Following the method of UDG, we have been able to identify three kinds of action the city of Marseille has uh, undertaken and uh, would like to make better in the future. Uh, taking stock of what has been set up uh, for many years now, the GPT mayors also presented the ambition for 2.0 or 3.0 city. On their side, the citizen talked about their daily life and the way they use or they don't use the digital services, what is working and well, and what could be improved. So uh, three categories of best practices, or <clears throat> let's say set of actions have been identified during this event. Digital technology to improve uh, administrative, online administrative step, to foster citizens' participation, and to accompany families and kids in the city. So firstly, digital technology to improve online administrative steps. As emphasized by Sophie Rocks, Deputy Mayor in charge of civil status, the Marseille.fr e-services, which are offered to citizens, are quite relevant and comprehensive, but they need to be improved. Complementary to the website, the Alon Mary Hotline is there to answer the numerous phone calls, as many, many citizens use the phone first because they don't know how to use the services online. Participants also confirmed that the physical link between the administration and the citizen is very important. Digitalization shall never limit this contact. This is something very important, especially for the most digitally student category of the population. Among the outline and priority lie the creation of a single account to be granted access to more services and the homogenization of services in the city territory which is not at the moment very, very efficient. The second best practices deals with digital technology to foster citizens' participation. The involvement of citizens is the, in the municipality policies is a top priority of the new governance elected in 2020. With no surprise, the role of digital tools to reach this objective is very high. The city is currently assessing what was worked, what has worked so far, and what hasn't in the past. 
2022 will be the we see the launch of a new platform, a participative platform, where citizens will be invited to react and assess the public policies, but also where they will be encouraged to carry on concrete projects in their district thanks to a participative budget. The overall ambition of the city is to set up a citizen assembly, both online and for real. This assembly will meet regularly and give their opinion on the, on the way the city managed things. Lastly, digital technology to accompany family and kids as a best practices has been extracted from a talk between participants about the specific needs of families and the difficulty they face daily. Improving the quality of life of families in general and of the most deprived in particular is also among the strongest commitment of the municipality. Accessible through the city's website, the Super Kids apps deal with kindergarten, schooling, and leisure activity steps. But it's not, it is not currently uh, providing enough flexibility to the people. This is why the tool will be retrofitted and services will be simplified and extended. At the same time, the city will commit to developing the use of digital tools in school as it is the best way to prepare future e-citizens. As a conclusion of this very, very interesting uh, net, uh, workshop we organized, I would say that, again, that, the work, that this workshop was by the far the most enriching we have had the opportunity to organize. The question of EU citizenship has been addressed and the feedback from participants was very positive, but uh, the experimentation of daily life makes it hard to connect the dot between the, how the EU is improving citizens' rights and how it is perceived locally. What concerns cities, <clears throat> I would say that designing communication tool is maybe not the hardest things to do, but knowing what to tell to people can be. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think this is very interesting how wide ranging uh, your approach is to look at different fields where to use uh, digitalization. I have a few questions and I would like to encourage again everyone to, to ask your question because this is, this is the moment when you, we can go a little bit also uh, in details in depth. So when you mentioned the, the, the you know, facilitating admin procedures, uh, administrative procedures for citizens, having a single account, a single space, uh, Allo Marie, if I, if I remember well. Uh, how can you assure that everybody has access to this? No? Because this is where the digital divide really comes into play. When we talk about you know, basic administrative issues, uh, this is you know, particularly important to have, for example, the elderly on board or people with uh, scarce internet access. So, what is what are your measures or what are your strategies to somehow make sure that everybody has access to these uh, these platforms both in terms of technology and both in terms of personal skills well the event actually this is the weak point of the of the policy that means that um people that are very well connected and educated for the digital era can uh, do most of their um, administrative steps online without contacting uh, mm -hmm. the, the Alomeri hotline. Okay. What we should maybe do in the future is to um, assess the difference of, uh, of the public uh, using the e-services and the one who calls directly the, directly the, the Alomeri uh, hotline. Another point is the, how we can uh, maintain um, local uh, public facilities to help people to uh, register and to to be more more easy with the the, the, the tool, uh, this is something which is uh, upon reflection within the administration because we know that it, it, it won't make sense to develop more and more e services if the people in the district or the boards cannot uh, be granted uh, education or even training to be more much more easier with the uh, with the the tool so at the moment this is a uh, let's say this is a kind of uh, uh, 
an addition of different tools and two major way to uh, address people and add them, which is the phone or the website. But we know that this is not fully efficient at the moment because we still have public amenities in the borough, but we need to the, probably the need to be much more efficient regarding training and uh, accompanying measure, uh, daily accompanying measure for, for the citizens. Thank you. This is, uh, I think it's important that you have further goals and further uh, tasks identified in this regard. And I have another question uh, when it comes to the participatory platform, uh, which is, I think it's, it's, it's great and it's uh, really an assurance for citizen participation. How much do you have to change procedures inside the municipality to match, you know, this platform? So how, what, what was first? Uh, uh, participatory mechanisms inside the municipality and you created a platform to match those or you created a platform and you also had to change uh, participatory mechanisms inside the municipality to make them more, uh, you know, adaptable to the digital, the digital platform? Um... In my mind, uh, I mean the 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 today's today's um, participative um, scheme is not operating because people people um, people are not associated. I mean monthly or uh, at least uh, uh, every uh, every quarter to uh, the local decision of the of, of the city council. Of course. The, 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 the city council uh, is open to the to the population and they can be part of the of, of the meeting of the of the uh, representative the elected representative but we know that they don't join uh, regularly this event so they don't meet the the, the, the representative and they don't have any uh, more um, choice to formulate or to give to this uh, elected representative. So um, today, the, the idea is to not to cut the not to cut not to cut the, con, the physical contact with the municipality. Um, yeah. Sorry, we have some uh, some noise from maybe home work. Yeah. So uh, the idea is not to is not to cut definitively the, definitively the physical contact between the population and the administration or, or, or the elected uh, represent, representative. So, um, but at the same time, uh, the city needs to adapt to the digital era. So that means that uh, the, the the scheme, the plan is to uh, open. Um, an assembly for real that could be in set in parallel of the uh, city council and at the same time to enlarge this assembly virtually so that much more uh, people from in Marseille can express their, their interest. Uh, what you what you point is is I mean is the main the main problem is that it's not only to give uh, the key to, 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 let, to let people speak about what they want, but we need to to um, to refund the way the administration works. There are a lot of process that means that uh, beyond the beyond this idea, the municipality does not want just to consult the population, but they want really that their opinion can be uh, taken into consideration and uh, be feasible. Uh, otherwise, this is just th that that would be uh, taken just as more uh, a new way to consult people, but with no concrete step after this uh, phase of consultation that can be monthly or uh, or four times a year, for example. So, I mean, the main concern is to make this uh, new uh, kind of approach feasible and concrete for the population, and this is also why. Um, the, 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 the municipality decided at the same time to, uh, to allocate a specific budget to help people um, creating new projects in their district, in their borough, projects that can be complementary to what the city is uh, under, uh, undertaking uh, daily. So the, the platform will also cost money. Yep. 
Okay, thank you very much. This is very important to see that uh, you know digitalization is not only an additional layer on an existing set of mechanisms, but it actually interrupts or disrupts often uh, the work of administrations and any organization uh, in general. So this is something quite important to keep in mind. Thank you very much, uh, Marce, for uh, sharing your experiences and your discussions with us. I would move on to Cluj Napoca and I would invite uh, our colleagues in Cluj Napoca to share with us uh, the outcomes of your last workshop. Hello, uh, my name is Bogdan Stanchu. I hope you hear me. You hear me? Okay. Uh, can you see my um, yes, so works. screen? Okay. Um, so, um, actually, uh, we held our local workshop uh, on the 3rd of December uh, 2021 because uh, in the last um, week of November, the City Hall uh, uh, hold, held a, a public debate on the um, digital strategy, strategy for digital transformation, uh, on the strategy for digital um, transformation of the city. And uh, being the City Hall, uh, they had uh, a great uh, audience, uh, both online and um, having some five or six uh, experts in the City Hall. So uh, we just um, built on that uh, public debate and uh, had a meeting with um, some experts involved uh, in the, um, uh, laying out the strategy of the city. And here you can have, you have two screenshots. The one on the left is from the city hall's public debate. Uh, the one on the right is from our workshop. And uh, as a number of attendees, uh, there were uh, 20 for the city hall and uh, seven, eight uh, you know, at our workshop. Plus, uh, there was more than a thousand uh, viewership on Facebook because the um, city hall debate uh, was uh, broadcasted on Facebook and uh, YouTube too. too. Okay, uh, in our expert committee, we talked about uh, three main projects, which is the first one was, of course, uh, the hot issue of the day, the hot topic of the day, which was the digital transformation strategy of the city. Uh, the second uh, project was uh, um, about a council, a consultative council that works uh, in Cluj Napoca, has been working since uh, 2018, I believe, the Advisory Council for Entrepreneurship and Innovation in IT. And the third project we talked about was um, creating a local innovation office within the city hall which is quite new. It started to operate only this year. The citizens feedback, we picked it up from uh, the debate of the city hall because there were much more um, citizens involved that we could have uh, bring, to, uh, bring together on our workshop. And um, here are some lessons we learned. And I will read this uh, because uh, it's quite a specific uh, topic. So the Cluj Napoca Digital Transformation Strategy brings together under the umbrella of a common vision, agreed and shared by all relevant actors in the local ecosystems, uh, some intervention priorities aim at improving public services, developing digital infrastructure, data-driven decisions, participation and transparency, protecting citizens, data and ensuring cyber security. Now, uh, what I must say here, because it is quite important, this uh, strategy was one of its, the first of its kind in Romania. And uh, it's not just a framework, some blah, blah, you know, you just take and write some uh, words uh, so they uh, look nice and uh, you say, okay, we have a strategy. No, because uh, each, um, uh, the, this strategy was supervised by the local university and uh, there are some specific lines of actions. Uh, for example, for improving services, public services, you have to, uh, there are some um, line of actions uh, for urbanism from pre-university education, public health, environment, local economy, and so on. 
and under each uh, of these lines of action, there are some steps to be taken, concrete steps. Now, I will not develop more on this because the um, uh, strategy is quite uh, big. It has more than 100 pages. Okay, so I will pass uh, to the second uh, topic, which uh, was the consultative council. And as I told you, it uh, meets uh, regularly, one, two, three, four times uh, a year. And uh, its uh, main role is to advise the public administration on uh, what to do regarding the IT development of the public services, especially. And uh, first, uh, the, the third uh, lesson uh, that we are still learning, we are now beginning to learn, it's how this local office for digital transformation uh, will work. It is quite new and uh, it is, um, it's, um, the, the idea behind it is to enhance the communication between the public administration and all the stakeholders. So when somebody has a, a problem with the public administration that uh, is related somehow to the IT and C sector, then he knows exactly where he should go. This is quite new uh, in uh, our country. I don't know, probably in other country, uh, such uh, innovation offici offices were established long time ago, but here uh, it's quite a new uh, idea. And uh, it started this year. Uh, we had some good talk with the head of the innovation office and we'll, uh, we hope that uh, when we will um, hold our local conference, uh, he will come and uh, tell us uh, the first results of these um, innovation offices. So as for the best practices, uh, mainly uh, they are uh, the three one I put uh, them here on this slide. It's that uh, a digital transformation strategy, of course, must involve all the relevant stakeholders. And if there is a university in town, then you should um, access its resources and um, accept the guidance. So you don't have to be the city hall and say, okay, I'm the city hall, I will do this uh, strategy. No, if, if there is a university in town, uh, for sure you have to, uh, it's better to uh, approach it and uh, talk to it and uh, use its expertise. Then there is this consultative forum uh, for the industry of uh, IT and communication. And the third one is the, the um, innovation office. These are the relevance of the selected best practice. And um, because um, I don't know if everybody knows the, back, the national background against which we evolved here in Romania, I put here some fact and figures. And um, as you can see, Romania ranks the last and by far of the 27 new member states uh, in uh, the 2021 edition of the Digital Economy and Society Index. And only 16% of the Romanians are actively engaging in e-government services, while the EU average is 64%. Now, uh, in, um, at the national level, Cluj-Napoca is seen as a front runner, but I think we are still lagging behind uh, the Western part of the EU. And um, according to the data that the city hall uh, sent us, uh, roughly a third of all the forms received by the city hall are now sent in a digital format, which is quite good at uh, the national level, I repeat. And uh, there are uh, more, uh, almost uh, 150 types of forms that are available online on the city hall website. And there is uh, one common place, uh, only one website. You can access all these. It's called uh, Antonia Public uh, Clerk. And yes, um, an academic research uh, dating from last year ranked Cluj-Napoca as being the first from the cities in Romania uh, regarding the digital front office services provided by the city halls with a score of 92 of 100. Uh, that would be all from here. For yeah, thank you very much, Bogdan. This is very interesting to see how uh, in a context, in a national context that is, uh, has kind of very bad statistics, you are still, you know, the front runner and you're able to do a lot of innovation. I have one question when it comes to uh, your, your digital strategy embedded in, in your overall innovation uh, trajectory, no? Because somehow cluj Napoca is famous for uh, holding the European Capital of Youth season in 2015, which, you know, created this 
this uh, this vision of the city, which was very young, uh, and of course, youngsters would be probably the best uh, interlocutors for a digital uh, transformation. Mm -hmm. Then you have also strong IT sector that is also, of course, helping in the whole uh, process. How much do you see this as a, as a conscious, you know, long-term strategy building this up? And what is the role of your digital strategy within all these other, you know, fields like innovation, IT, uh, IT industry, uh, youth? Uh, participation. Uh, so, um, uh, yes, yeah, so we, we are building up on this um, youth vibe of the city. Our IT sector is uh, pretty developed. But um, what I can say, the, the, the digital strategy will def definitely help uh, uh, help the city bridging the gap between Cluj-Napoca and the rest of the continent, of the, let's say, Estonia or Denmark and, and um, Finland and other uh, more developed um, countries in the digital sector. Um, the first problem we have uh, here as a citizen in Cluj Napoca are not the local public services or the local uh, ecosystem of entrepreneurship and uh, innovation. Uh, the big problem is that we, we don't have a very good access to the national public services, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, here comes, I think, uh, that uh, having this uh, strategy, which I think it's quite a good strategy, may be an inspiration for, uh, national, for the national level, because, uh, you know, uh, through these new funds from the EU for resilience and um, recovery, there are a lot of uh, money for um, digitalization of the services. And uh, our hope is that having this uh, example of strategy, the national government may or may not, but let's say it may be inspired and develop it uh, at a bigger scale. Uh, I hope uh, I answered your question. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Bogdan. This is a very important point that, uh, you know, forefront from the cities like here in EU Digit, you, you can, in a way, set the ground for broader uh, innovation. Also, you can inspire other cities, you can inspire your national government. So this is very important to keep in mind how to, you know, transfer, how to tell the story of these practices, how to teach other cities to catch up uh, with you, with your uh, more innovative cities. So thank you, Bogdan. Uh, uh, this was from Cluj-Napoca, and I would move on to Genova, where Barbara will share with us the findings of the last workshop. Okay, thank you. I will uh, share my my screen. Okay, can you see that? Yes. Okay. Okay, so we, as Genoa, we organized the local workshop on the 26th of, of October. Uh, we, um, we started um, in thinking how to organize it. We started from uh, the good experience that we had as a municipality on the work of digital communication. We started from that. So contacting uh, our colleagues from the uh, communication, uh, uh, communication and marketing digital strategy, um, we arrived uh, to, to um, two different issues that we uh, develop uh, in, uh, in our workshop. Um, the first was the public services, the digitalization of public services, just like the citizen folder or citizen platform uh, that I will tell you um, after, and uh, the digitalization of, uh, um, of cultural events. We have a very important event in, uh, in the city uh, that is the Rally Days, and we um, we, we as a municipality have to face the situation of the, the, the pandemic situation and the fact that nobody uh, 
could uh, could uh, visit uh, and could come to this uh, important event in, in uh, 2020. Um, so we we decided to develop the local workshop on this main um, these two main issues, but always taking in consideration also the communication, uh, the institutional communication of this important uh, these two important uh, tool that uh, that the, the municipal uh, develop. Um, so uh, on, on one side, digitalization of services or event, but also digitalization of uh, communication. Um, because, uh, for example, for this uh, citizen folder, uh, that is a um, um, a page in uh, in the city uh, city official website uh, where you can accede with your digital identity uh, service or with uh, the electronic um, identity card, and where you, you as citizen you can uh, um, you can have a, a folder a real folder with all the documentation with a, a, a lot of the documents regarding your life your work and in your family that you can have and uh, for example request or download easily for any kind of um, uh, of uh, activity you may need uh, so this is a very um, a very a great step forward in the in the in the digitalization of uh, of uh, of public services and also maybe we hope also in the improve of uh, of citizens life because they can uh, avoid to go out to make a, to stay in a queue in the public offices and also you can they can find different uh, documents um, belonging to different institutions, that is another important thing, in a one, only one place. Uh, this, this group in this citizen folder have been made up with, uh, thanks to the collaboration of the municipality with, um, the, for example, the, the agency that uh, work on waste management, uh, the agency of uh, local public transport. So, so everyone can go um, in this folder and have all the documentation. So they, um, what we, um, we, we not only talk about this, but we also talk about uh, how to communicate to citizen in a period of pandemic also. And um, uh, the, the, the decision of the municipality was to, um, to to use digital communication, but without uh, uh, forgetting the, the normal communication. I remember what an expert said uh, that uh, we we uh, we talk about uh, uh, we talk uh, on um, digital transition. So as a transition, uh, we have to be. Uh, calm and try to to do it step by step, not mm, not mm, changing from one day to another. So the idea is to match the digital communication and the off uh, off uh, offline digi digi um, communication. Sorry, um, the the the, the, um, uh, the feedback we had from a citizen uh, were were very good. Uh, they asked in in any case they asked also to have a support in the explanation of these tools because um, uh, as we know uh, no everyone is uh, skilled to 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 digital school tools so um what we 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 received as uh, also as a, as a request is to be supported in the um uh, learning how to use the, the, the digital tools and this, for example, this digital, this citizen uh, folder. So um, it was interesting also to know that uh, citizens uh, are trying also to to help uh, one each other with uh, some uh, uh, local and um, committees uh, in, in in the neighborhood to help, uh, for example, other people to uh, to do um, to receive some documents or some I don't know um, um, 
yeah, documents they, they need uh, without uh, moving. So in this period of uh, pandemic have been, uh, has been important. Um, for what concerned the, the other, uh, the other, the other theme we, we tackled during our uh, local workshop, um, that means uh, the cultural events, uh, as you maybe can, can, as you can see, we, um, the municipality, uh, after the, 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 the breakout of uh, the, the, the pandemic, uh, decided not to, to lose the appointment of the early days. And, um, and so to, to give the possibility to use digitalization, to give the possibility to uh, persons and people all over Europe, and we hope also all over the world to, uh, to have the, the possibility to visit digitally um, these beautiful uh, public, uh, these beautiful buildings that are not public, not every, every building is public, it's private and normally, um, twice a year and they are open to the to the public and uh, so the municipality decided to 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 transform this event in a digital event um, this the, this transformation what we talk about in our workshop has a positive and negative effect, effects and also um, strong point and weak points as we can imagine, because, for example, um, I remember uh, that uh, some experts talk about the, the fact that the uh, seen digitally have the possibility to 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 watch um, from uh, with a video you can um, you have if you are a researcher or a studier you can you can uh, see more in details for example the paintings on the, or the, the the architecture but on the other hand you lose the the the, the experience of being inside a building. But in any case, um, the, the, the very important thing is that we, uh, the, the municipality also uh, during 2020, when it was possible to, to, to travel and to visit uh, these beautiful palaces in Raleigh days, they decided to maintain also the digital um, the, the digital uh, uh, way of visiting because it was uh, a way of uh, also um, promote uh, this uh, this um, this event and and it was also a way to to, to give the possibility to to the person that could uh, travel uh, couldn't travel or visit to have the, the, the experience of uh, seeing this, uh, this beautiful palace. So, and uh, in the end, we, uh, I think it has been a very interesting uh, local workshop. Uh, we, uh, we are working on, uh, on digitalization in, in the municipality, uh, but without uh, forgetting uh, also the, 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 what is the, uh, what was the trans traditional way of uh, of communicate and of, of organizing event and uh, of um, uh, offering uh, public services? So we are in a transition, as we said. So we are trying to uh, to go uh, smoothly uh, forward to to try to um, to answer to citizen needs, but uh, following their their. Uh, their timing and their um, experience. So uh, this is our um, our local workshop uh, uh, experience. Thank you very much, Barbara. We have one question from Marseille, from Lorraine. If uh, the number of virtual participants uh, in the Digital Rally Week, uh, how does it compare to the you know, physical presence, the number of physical visitors in the past? Maybe this is something that Marisa will talk about, but maybe you can just give a quick answer to this. Sorry, did you ask me if the the the, the visitors if they are if they were uh, different? Uh, I correctly. Sorry, uh, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. So okay. if if the digital visitors uh, were more or less than uh, the physical visitors before. Mm, 
I, I, I'm not very sure. I, I have to admit, I'm not in the in, in the sector. So maybe uh, Marisa Gardella and uh, and Pietro Tosa that will speak speak later can can answer. But I think that it has been uh, a, a good result, uh, even if uh, in in the digitalization and somehow and sometimes the people that um, visit digitally the, the palaces the, the the year after had decided to come and and visit uh, uh, offline and that means um, by person so um, they had a, they had a, a good a good uh, feedback for the only digital experience and decided to maintain also in the, in the other. I don't know the number, uh, but we can ask to our colleague that will speak later after the coffee break. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Barbara. Uh, we will definitely come back to this question. And I, I think this is also a great example for the fact that digital and physical events are not completely disconnected. They're not, uh, you know, exclusive one or the other, but they can uh, strengthen each other, they can uh, reinforce each other. And also another thing that I found very important in what you said is that uh, citizens can help each other learning uh, these tools. And this is, I think, very important for the uh, digital divide perspective, social inclusion perspectives, even, even uh, generational integration, intergenerational integration perspective, because we all know that uh, you know, youngsters could teach their grandparents to, to use the digital tools more than anyone else, I guess, in the, yeah. in the field. Yeah, and if I if I may, it is important for for the administration to support this mutual helping uh, of 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 people. So it is important to be there and try to 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 help and to foster this uh, this uh, very good experience of helping each other. So trying to to support. Yes, thank you very much, Barbara. And I would move on to Rotterdam. So I invite the Rotterdam colleagues to share with us their experiences. Yes, I will share my screen. One moment. Is it visible to everybody? In a second it will be, yes, it is. All right. Uh, oh, it's not on the slide that I was on. <laughs> Uh, hi, my name is Zoe Martial and I work for the city of Rotterdam together with my colleagues Esmeralda Marsman and Rosanna Moti. And uh, we had a, um, an expert meeting on clear communications and we focused mostly on letters, flyers and folders. Um, and we had a very small uh, number of attendees for people. Um, all of them were women. Uh, and we had local experts and there were six of them. And what we did was kind of... Um, um, a relay race. So we started in, in, in one place and then we moved from place to place. Uh, we did this uh, together with the community uh, Rotterdammer Centraal and it's a, it's a network for uh, professionals of Rotterdam who provide services to, to the people from Rotterdam. So we went to uh, the water board that, that manages all the water in the city. Uh, we went to a local housing um, uh, organization and to the community or to the city of Rotterdam, of course. And in each place, we um, every institution had a letter or a flyer or a folder ready for the um, participants to to read and to see what they understood and how it was experienced. And the participants were people uh, with learning disabilities, so they had they are um, they have more trouble reading and more trouble understanding uh, what's written. Um, it was a very fun fun day. It was the only sunny day in the week, I think, as you can see on the picture. It's all uh, blue skies, uh, and we moved from uh, we started the the water board, the organization that manages the water, and um, on the picture on the top right you see two women. Um, and they said, well, the long sentences and long words are really hard to understand. So if you use um, sentences with commas that go under multiple lines, they don't really get it, what, it, what, what it's meant to uh, convey. Um, and then um, we went to the, to the next, uh, next institution, it was the housing committee. 
And there they had letters uh, that are two sided and the, the participant said, well, if I get a letter that has two sides, I probably won't read it. They, they might read the first page, uh, but it's overwhelming if they see so many, so many words on a letter. So they, they just put it away and maybe try to read it again next week. But it's important to know that because if you send long letters um, and people don't read it, then we, they will never get the message and they don't know if they have to do something. So it was a so important insight for us. Then we went to the city of Rotterdam um, and we showed them a folder that was um, improved by our communication uh, um, team. Um, and what they said about the, the folder there is that images help uh, understand the letters or a folder, uh, but the image or the picture should say something about the text. So you can just put an image in there just for fun. Um, it has to convey a message. I hear some some noise on the background. Somebody's microphone is still on. Um, and the fun thing is we went from institution to institution by um, by bicycle taxi. You can see it on the top right. And the two ladies, they, they really loved it. And they were waving to everybody. And they felt like the queen of the Netherlands. Um, and it was, a, it was a very fun and also very insightful and inspiring morning. Um, in brief, what the tips and tricks were is so avoid long sentences, sentences and long words. Um, start a letter with a friendly sen uh, sentence. So if somebody hasn't paid a fine or hasn't paid a bill, don't say you haven't paid and you have to do this, but start with something friendly because then uh, the letter leaves a, a better feeling behind, which is also important. Uh, include pictures and icons if they say something about the text and try to avoid long letters because um, they are not read. So uh, make it as short as possible. Um, the professionals uh, that participated were also, um, yeah, were very surprised by the, uh, by the comments. Um, they thought that they thought of everything and that the letter was already perfect, but now they, they, they saw that there's still room for improvement. Um, and one thing that they really um, uh, notice is that if you say if there's a certain date included in a, in a letter, so you have to uh, before or um, you can change your keys between the 6th and 17th of October. It's confusing because the 17th of October, is that included in the date or not? Is that the last day possible or should it be for the day? So really be as clear as possible about um, about those small things. Um, and I would also like to share some best practices with you. We didn't share it with the expert committee, but these are some things that we work on. Um, uh, Rotterdam is quite digit digitally advanced. 10 years ago, we, um, we, we did a, lot, a, a big digitization project. So all our forms are all, uh, already online available and not as PDF forms, but really as a as application, so most of our things um, the citizens can can arrange online. Um, and since the um, uh, pandemic, we also have a digital desk. We call it the Digitale Bali, and this is a, a possibility for citizens to video call with the with the government. You don't need an app. You get a you make an appointment. You get a link in your email address. You click on the link. Um, and the conversation starts. And it's a, it's a very simple and easy way for citizens to communicate with the, with the municipality. Um, and it's very useful because that way people do not have to leave their house to go to, a, to, to the, what's it called? The, the, the community, the city, the council building. Um, it started at the beginning of the pandemic and we make really small changes every time. So. Uh, first, we started with one process. Um, when babies are born, we, you have to register them at the at the community, or at the at the, the at the government, um, and that can be done online now. And to to uh, identify themselves, we use DigiD. DigiD. It's a it's a way of identification. Um, and we test this with many people. We, we use a lot of surveys to find out what works well and what doesn't work well. We also tested it with people with a learning disability to, 
to make it as uh, uh, digital accessible as possible. And of course, it's not perfect yet, um, but with small changes, we keep improving. So that's kind of important in everything we do. We, we keep trying to improve ourselves by researching what goes well, what doesn't go well, and make small changes and small steps to um, improve it every day. Uh, we also have a UX lab. It's a user experience research lab where we um, try to find out how users experience our digital products. It's not just for, uh, for citizens of the city, but also for the civil servants, because we have a lot of applications that we use within the, within the city of Rotterdam. So not just for the citizens, but the servants. Um, and it helps us get a lot of qualitative insights in how, how things work, what, what, what is a perceived as going well and what doesn't go that well. Um, and it's a really fun uh, way and very insightful way to find out about uh, how people use our products because that's the most important thing. People use our products, so our products should be aimed for the people and the people shouldn't adjust themselves to be able to use our products. And the last thing, it's very new. It's a digital uh, participation platform, Mijn Rotterdam, My Rotterdam. Um, and this is a digital meeting place where citizens and civil servants can participate and share opinions and uh, citizens can co-decide about uh, their direct neighborhood and their environment so if if the streets are getting renewed they can put they can uh, give their insights and opinions on how they would like it done um, and there's also interaction with citizens organized on the platform so it doesn't all have to be in a small room somewhere in the neighborhood but now it can also be done digitally and um, yeah the relevance to our eu digit objectives it's not really about strengthening uh, US, EU, eu citizenship and digital aware or citizens awareness but it's more aimed at reducing the digital gap and co-building uh, the policies uh, or digital policies together with the citizens um, well thank you very much for your attention I'm going to try to stop yeah. sharing my screen. Thank you, Zoya. This is very, very interesting, uh, especially when, when you talk about you know, accessibility of uh, official communication, no? because this is something we're all struggling. I mean, I'm, I'm having problems understanding the letters from the tax office of Hungary, <laughs> to be honest. And, uh, and this, is, this is very interesting because this is very much about another aspect of the digital divide, because if we put this into the digital realm, can we, and this is my question to you, can we say that uh, the digital, you know, digital communication, digital tools can actually you know, open ways to make communication you know, more rich in audiovisual elements? Uh, for example, you, you showed us uh, the, the nice cartoon, which helped us to understand your point, which is great. But you know we're still used to you know bland letters with only text. So do you think digital transition will make it make information more accessible using audio and uh, vis audio visual communication can help the accessibility of official information or when we talk about you know information from tax or late payments this is this has to be written because the the law you know the legal circumstances really need this to be written in an official language um your first question about using uh, audiovisual uh, audio visual uh, tools definitely it it helps a lot um uh, in in some places we have talked about um uh, including links or a QR code, but people now people are less people are more used to using QR codes um, to show a video, for instance, on how to apply for something online to to really show all the steps that can be taken. Um, with this pandemic, we there are a lot of uh, videos from the government um, that that really show in short, clear language uh, what new measurements uh, were taken. So after a press conference often there are uh, videos appear online on how to um yeah what you should or shouldn't do and some uh non-profit organizations have really clear videos on on certain subjects um the city of rotterdam doesn't have it that much yet but we are yeah considering on how to uh, how to use the, that uh and your second question i forgot <laughs> Well, oh if, yeah, the, if, the legal, the legal yeah, terms. Exactly. Yeah, 
Um, well, it's, it's funny you mention it because um, our legal department is really working hard on uh, improving and make it more, make the legal terms more understandable. There are certain things that should be mentioned, um, but still you can make it much easier. And I know in the, in the Netherlands, there is an organization that is trying to um, uh, make all the, the legal terms and uh, um, terms and adjustments is not the word there's another word um they try to uh, conditions yeah. yeah terms and conditions yes uh they try to capture it in images and and uh, infographics to make it more clear that's that's a that's a, an organization that's trying to do it so it is coming up but it's getting it's not that fast thank you zoe this is very exciting as an urban planner i can't wait to have uh, zoning plans in video form or cartoon form i think we yeah, all yeah that would be good <laughs> we all need this okay thanks a lot uh, let's move over to hamburg and we are a little bit tight on schedule so I'll, i have quicker questions and i will ask you to have quicker answers as well so uh, hamburg please let us know how did yes. it work hello I, I try to share my uh, my screen wait a moment please we can see your desk yes uh, it's okay <laughs> okay we have tomorrow uh, tomorrow uh, today we have a lot of problems with the technic <laughs> um Perfect, we see it. And yes, okay, was? Wo noch? Oben. Ah, mal wo? Ich sehe es nicht. Ja. Nein. <lacht> ja. Ach, da. Genau, und dann auch um die Ja. Ja. Hm? Kommt ja gleich so. Jetzt aber. Ah, now. Ah, now it starts. No. Okay. Yes. No, we still have. <laughs> yes, now it works. Yes, now it works. Yes. And okay. Yes. Welcome to Hamburg. <laughs> um, yes, we did our workshop um, 18th of November online. It was an online meeting, and our participants. Uh, are half female and half male. Uh, that was a good balance, I think. Um, we have some uh, municipal departments, uh, um, people, uh, senior, there was someone from the senior chancellery uh, and a lot of senior, senior citizens, members of the senior parliament and uh, representatives from an NGO. Um, we talk uh, first about the digital strategy for Hamburg 2020. Uh, this is the basis of the uh, public um, of the public um, digitalization or the di digitalization for um, for um, for public services. Um, objectives are the it, it, it identification and use of the opportunities offered by digitalization for a citizen-friendly administration and shaping the digital society together. And that means shaping the, the different ministries, uh, the different services uh, and the citizens uh, together um, to use the digitally, digitally uh, services or digital services. Um, we, um, um, we talked about the digital strategy. Uh, oh, so I had to go on. Uh, we talked about the way of digitalization in Hamburg. Um, this uh, strategy uh, is the basis for all digital uh, services. And this decentralized first is, is uh, the decentralized development. Uh, that means the ministries and the um, 
the, um, the departments uh, have to uh, to, um, to 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 develop their own way. Uh, what they uh, what is good? How to di uh, how to di uh, digital uh, or how uh, they can offer digital services. Uh, the implementation of specific projects in ministries and departments. Um, third, the development of digital strategy in the individual business areas. That means uh, uh, the same. Emphasizing these, its significant, significance as an urban transformation project. Uh, that's, that means the whole, uh, the whole city had to um, to support it and not only the public services, it means uh, we have to integrate um, experts or, um, or um, business, um, business uh, pr uh, private business um, people to, uh, to support this project, this transformation. And digitalization should take place from the citizens' perspective. perspective. That means uh, we have always to think the, the, what, what, what's the need from the citizens. Uh, that was was Rotterdam so very good explained us. And uh, for, uh, at last, digital first, but not the only way. Um, and then we have. Uh, so, um, and then we talked about services, and the problem was that we uh, have no, not very uh, good working services now in our public in the public services. Uh, we have uh, the possibility to make uh, dates or to um, uh, uh, to. Um, uh, um, um, to uh, to get some uh, some uh, permissions or to to uh, in in uh, on, on online, but it's not a whole packet and uh, it works okay, but it, it's not a very good best practice uh, example. I we we thought, and uh, so I we took some of the uh, good working uh, not. Um, not from the uh, from the administration, but from the from the public services uh, examples, and we uh, talk about that. And one of them is the half of how any half of how is the Hamburg Transport uh, Transport uh, Trading uh, Society, and a half of how any means it's an app. And uh, it starts January 2020 at, yes, and check in by this app and then you pay uh, uh, the cheapest fee for the travel on this day. And this, the registration of the ride happens by change automatically, but it works only with a smartphone. And uh, so we have a problem with people who has not no smartphone or for them as it's too, uh, it's, it's, it's diff uh, too difficult. And, um, but the half of our transports association uh, uh, offers courses for seniors and disabled people in using this app or in using ticket stations. Um, so we ho hope uh, we can, uh, um, we can uh, um, increase, uh, decrease uh, the gap. Um, this one, yes. And uh, one of the, uh, the best working uh, of us in our public service is the e-library in Hamburg, because we have a lot of uh, services there e on e, uh, e uh, on dig digital services. Uh, it works from um, film streamings, uh, learning uh, platforms, um, tutorials, uh, and um, archi 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 archives, uh, yes, or uh, something like the Britannica Library. 
um, and um, you can read papers. Um, so it's or streaming uh, books or children books, and uh, it's all, all uh, it's very uh, slow um, um, entrance, and you can have not to pay uh, so uh, so much, and they help you uh, in using this uh, services. Um, our conclusion in our uh, workshop has been the city of Hamburg is on a good way to impl implement the digital transformation. There are a lot of issues by implementation public services, for example, data protection, ease of use that were a very, very uh, um, that are topics we are discussing uh, with the citizens and uh, that they want to have um, um, a support uh, in, 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 uh, in using and um, in, um, in uh, and the, uh, the, the, the technical equipment uh, must, uh, 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 must uh, use easy or, that, that are very important questions for, for the citizens. And some of them, of our issues, are European-wide questions. Um, for example, a European server to, uh, to protect the data and to, to collect them. Uh, and uh, that means that we are on independent of Google, for example. And a citizen-friendly digital transformation for administrative administrative services also includes analog ways for administrative services. Um, yes. Thank you very much, Birgit. Thank you. This Thank is you. very interesting, especially uh, when it comes to. I, I really liked your final question about uh, European-wide questions, and uh, I think it's particularly interesting in the light of uh, what you mentioned in the beginning that uh, digital strategies are developed in a decentralized way, even in, in inside Germany, even maybe in the the, the Greater Hamburg area. So yes, how I how do we bridge this gap that we need European strategies? How to deal with Google? How to make compat different you know local digital services compatible? And in the way and in, in the same time we we do this development in a very decentralized way in Europe, but even in in a, in a region. I think there are first the first uh, discussions about a European server, uh, and uh, I think we had to. Um, and to to, uh, um, to follow this this way, and to to, uh, to get a conclusion. Oh, uh, yes, uh, yes, a conclusion to this. Oh, or not? Um, conclusion is not written. Huh? I, I guess this is a, an important point. Also, the EU, you know, the that, Commission is discussing all this, and also I think projects like EU Digital solution, can, a solution. solution sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can, can make the recommendations as well that fits to the cities as well. I would thank you, Birgit, for your uh, contribution. And I would very quickly jump over to Varna. Because yes. we're running a little bit late, so we, uh, we will still have a break afterwards, but maybe not 15 minutes, only 10 minutes. So Varna, the floor is yours. Valina, I think we don't hear you, but we see you. Yes, good morning. Uh, so, uh, um, so I'm sharing the, the screen, you see it? Do you, do you see it? Uh, in a second, we will, I believe. Yes. Okay, so um, we, we planned our uh, meeting for, for the end of October, but uh, we had some difficulties. So uh, I will uh, tell you about the uh, preliminary conversations that we had with uh, participants and uh, uh, 
uh, with uh, civil servants from the municipality. They were uh, the secretary of the municipality who had a, a conversation about the di digitalization and uh, um, representative of the uh, citizens committee. Mm, they were representative of a citizens organization and uh, of IT company that we uh, that participate in the in the expert committee. Mm. So, as you uh, if you remember from the presentation of uh, uh, Bogdan about the DC index, you, you probably no, uh, noticed that uh, Bulgaria is also at the end of the, uh, the table. Uh, and the main problem is the uh, integration of digital technology. So in the city of Varna, uh, we don't have a general, um, general strategic document for digital transformation, but we do uh, work on uh, different, um, different elements of the digitalization. So I, I try to, uh, to, uh, to point out some of them. Um, and something that, that I, I didn't uh, put in the presentation is that uh, um, uh, last year we had, uh, there was a, a memorandum signed between the municipality and uh, uh, different stakeholders uh, from the city, uh, university and IT company. The memorandum is uh, called Varna City of Knowledge. And it is um, its goal is to uh, support the development and the transformation of the uh, economic profile uh, profile of the city, and also the deepening the the link with bet, uh, bet, links between science and business, and the development of the sectors with the greatest uh, potential, including the tourism, med medicine, information technology, and transportation. Um, uh, so that um, uh, also that is um, uh, related to the digital uh, transformation is uh, um, put in the new strategic document for the development of the city, uh, of the plan for the integrated development for 2021-27. Uh, one of the um, one of the uh, goals is uh, the integrated uh, development of the region through knowledge and innovation that will be um, achieved through uh, uh, digital transformation for quality and STEM education. This is uh, focused on uh, some of the focuses in the plan. Investments in investments in the uh, IT technologies and high tech infrastructure development, mm -hmm. and also in uh, development of innovative um, business areas. Uh, so th this is uh, uh, so I, I thought about this because it's not in the presentation. Now I'll, I'll come back to the uh, concrete um, practices that we have uh, uh, in the municipality. So the, the first the communication channels are um, what we work in is uh, mostly uh, improved uh, uh, thanks. <laughs> thanks to the, the project that we, uh, that we participated in uh, with uh, Genoa about the interactive cities. Uh, it was focused mainly on the social media but also um, uh, communication uh, within the municipality and communication with business. We had uh, the result of the project was the, uh, the de uh, develop this uh, 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 plan for uh, integrated action plan, uh, and uh, it is um, uh, we still work on, on this uh, on this top uh, on this um, topic. Uh, second point is uh, communication with the citizens. Uh, this electronic system for feedback and submission of sign of, of from citizens it is uh, uh, relatively new. It works. Uh, it is in use since the uh, uh, last year, since uh, 2020, and it is um, 
it is clear that it is uh, it's uh, more efficiently uh, uh, of uh, the it's, it improved the efficiency of the uh, processing of uh, all the information and signals from the citizens but uh, and the this uh, um, related to the feedback from citizens the, the second uh, point is uh, uh, more uh, relevant i think because uh, for us it's also uh, it's uh, not so uh, often um, um, uh, it's uh, not a uh, not yet a common practice but uh, we hope that it will be after this uh, experience this is uh, a public opinion survey uh, that was uh, uh, made uh, for the integrated development plan of Varna, this uh, strategic document for this uh, period. Um, the, uh, the citizens, uh, there was a, a specially dedicated uh, internet site for, for the, uh, the survey. And the citizens could um, participate and choose uh, uh, which uh, uh, what, what approach should be uh, should be taken in the in the development? They could choose between uh, knowledge and economic growth, sustainable environment, and uh, European cooperation approach. And uh, within those uh, those approaches, they could uh, choose an order in uh, in different order the priorities and the strategic goals. So at the end, uh, it was uh, chosen to uh, the, uh, the development that was uh, chosen in the, for, the, for the plan was sustainable environment and uh, economic and services with care for the people. Uh, also related to the communication with uh, uh, citizens and uh, civil society organizations, we. Uh, uh, the municipality participated in uh, another project, uh, democratization of policy making and implementation processes in city in, in big cities. Um, so, uh, as a result of this, um, so the, the project is ongoing, but uh, there will uh, it is uh, uh, we have already elaborated an ordinance on public consultation and discussions within uh, this project. Uh, which will uh, consist in um, there will be a, a specific uh, online platform where all the uh, all the discussions and uh, all, all the matters will be uh, uh, will be announced. All the discussions, all, all the documents related to those discussion will be published, and uh, 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 people and citizens could um, see and uh, also. Uh, uh, participate and give their opinion and proposals uh, regarding those uh, matters uh, for the city. Mm. So reactions from the, actually the uh, uh, what what is um, the, uh, what the people said about the uh, the problems in in the digital communication and digitalization in the city. Uh, something that also Zoe said, uh, it's <laughs> almost the same. Sometimes it looks like the, uh, the, the administrative services and the citizens, they talk different language. it is, uh, languages. It's too difficult to understand what, uh, what is uh, said and what is, um, uh, uh, what is, uh, is, is an information, what is provided to, to the citizens. And uh, also active citizens are not always positive and focus on the concrete topic. When they have, uh, it looks like when they have the, the platform to, to say their opinion, they, they, they do not talk about the concrete topic, but they, they talk about all the problems uh, that they want to be, uh, and that they want to have been, to, to be decided at once. So uh, also that is, uh, everyone agrees is that, uh, the new forms of civic participation will uh, co uh, stimulate collaborative uh, participation and the most appropriate forms uh, uh, now it looks uh, that uh, will be based on new technologies like electronic platforms for direct communications. Mm. 
So this is some uh, screenshots of the uh, digital services that uh, are provided by the municipality. And uh, some of the best practices that uh, we chose is the elaboration of the uh, integrated de uh, the, uh, development plan of the municipality with uh, the citizens' participation and the uh, system for electronic submission of documents for nursery, kindergarten and first grade. And also this is uh, the, um, the relevance of the, uh, the project that we uh, uh, that we develop with the goals of the, the, the project. So thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Valina. Uh, this is very interesting to see a lot of overlaps with the other cities. I would suggest, because we are really running late, that I would not uh, open questions now, but let's use the chat for any questions uh, for, for, for now. And uh, I suggest that we come back in 10 minutes. Is it, is it okay, Barbara? So we can meet here at uh, 11.22. So we all have a little a quick coffee break and then we can continue with panel number two. Okay, in 10 minutes. Okay, see you in 10 minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Levent.
Hi, Belina, I, I see that you are here. I just put in one question because I, I was also curious to this, but feel free to answer this in the, in the chats.
Hello, everyone. Maybe let's wait a two more minutes. Did I see empty screens? Okay. Okay, I think it's time to restart. So welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a nice uh, coffee. And uh, I'm really happy to see that in the chat, we, we started a nice conversation. So please use the chat. This is an, another you know, parallel layer where we can have conversations. And also, if during the presentations that are coming now, you have any questions, any comments, I can read them from there uh, to the speakers. So let's use this as a, as a way to communicate among uh, ourselves. Um, so welcome back to the AU Digit uh, Conference on Digitalization and Public Administration. We are starting now the second panel, which is focusing on one of the key topics of today's 
conference on the digitalization of cultural events in cities. So we will start with the experience of Genova and the Rolly Days with Mr. Pietro Tosso, who's scientific communicator of Rolly Days Digital Week, and Mrs. Marisa Gardella, who's the head of communication and social media strategy uh, department in the city of Genova. And then we will move to Milan with uh, Mrs. Isabella Manichini, who's the director of the entertainment area of the culture department of the city of Milan. And then we will visit the Scopitone Festival in Nantes with Cédric Uche, who's uh, the director of the media art department, uh, I think of Stereolux uh, as a project in Nantes. So first of all, uh, let's move to Genoa. And I know that this uh, meeting was supposed to take place in presence in Genoa. And this would have been an opportunity for you probably to visit you know, some of the amazing Rolly palaces that I had the chance to visit uh, actually twice uh, during the Rolly days, which was this uh, uh, you know, a spectacular display of, uh, of uh, you know, hundreds of years of history I can tell you visits to regular offices of architecture studios or you know, any kind of offices with frescoes from the 15th century and all that kind of things. So this is an extraordinary experience. But what happens if you cannot go in person to these places? How can we, you know, with the means of digital communication, with digital tools, how can we replace or maybe enrich no, the experience of being in these spaces? Because architecture as such, you know, as a for excellence, 3D uh, or even 4D uh, phenomena. So how can we move an event like the Rolly Days online? So I will ask uh, Mr. Pietro Tosso and Marisa Gardella to tell us a little bit about this. And please uh, think about your questions. Marisa, the floor is yours. OK. Hello, everybody. From Genoa, hello event. Nice to, to meet you online. <laughs> allora, um, Palazzi, I'm telling you about ci siamo? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm telling you about uh, i Palazzi dei Rolli UNESCO World Heritage Site in Genoa. The new roads and the Palazzi dei Rolli system is the name uh, of the Genoese site unlisted in the UNESCO World Heritage List since 2006. There are more than 100 pal Palazzi dei Rolli in Genoa built between late Renaissance and the Baroque times by the Genoese aristocracy families, but uh, uh, only 42 of these palaces are included in the UNESCO World Heritage because of uh, their location in the urban context and the high-ranking personalities that uh, were housed in them. In 1622, uh, Peter Paulus Rubens, uh, after visiting Genoa, uh, published a book in which he collected uh, all the sketches of his palaces, uh, promoting them as um, a housing model for the European aristocracy. In 1576, the Republic Senate established a peculiar public accommodation system. It was defined an official list, Rollo. Rollo is a list, was a list of prestigious palaces and uh, their owners um, had to state to host state visits in rotation. Um, Genoa was a republic and she uh, uh, and it um, hasn't uh, 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 a royal palace, um, a royal palace. The palaces were chosen. Lo fatto, lo fatto, lo fatto, lo fatto, fa. Okay. Sorry, we have some noises from from Milan. If you, Isabella, if you could please mute okay. your mic. And Marisa, I, I was wondering if you wanted to show images because I saw a really nice presentation about the holidays. So if you want, you could share that so that we could all see those beautiful palaces we talked about. Uh, sorry, um, Levent, could you repeat, please? Yes, Marisa, Levent, if, you, uh, understand. if you wanted to share a presentation, yes. I, I saw a presentation that is actually really nice and it helps us 
understand better. Ah, no, 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 to not miss the, the moment, sight of yeah. this beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. There we go. Perfetto. Okay. Si vede? Can you see? Si. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Allora, in 1576, the Republic Senate established a peculiar public accommodation system. Uh, it was defined in an officialist role uh, of these prestigious palaces, and their owners uh, had to host state visits in rotation. The palaces were chosen depending on the guest, uh, the guest ranks. We can see now uh, some uh, picture about uh, uh, Palazzi dei Rolli. This is uh, Palazzo Valvicenarica. Uh, now is the site of the uh, University of Genoa. After uh, Musei di Strada Nuova, Palazzo Rosso, Palazzo Bianco and uh, Palazzo Tursi. Uh, this uh, museum are um, placed in, uh, in Via Garibaldi. Garibaldi Street is one, uh, one street uh, of UNESCO uh, heritage uh, because uh, the site of UNESCO uh, are uh, composed from uh, buildings but also streets, two streets. Now uh, I speak uh, you. Uh, I'm speaking you about how to promote a UNESCO site and uh, its event. Uh, in uh, 2003, the municipality of Genoa decided to organize the, uh, a pilot, uh, uh, a pilot, a first pilot event, Rolly Days, called Rolly Days, to allow the public uh, to get to know the city's uh, UNESCO heritage. Most uh, of these palaces are now private residences, uh, offices, uh, museums, and uh, also banks. In the follow following years, the municipality uh, decided to develop uh, two editions uh, during the years of these events, of this event uh, in spring and also in autumn, to promote uh, and uh, the spread and to spread the, the knowledge of the UNESCO heritage in Italy and also uh, over the years the number of visitors uh, has increased and uh, also citizens have discovered and appreciate the heritage uh, of uh, their city. The event uh, has become uh, a uh, fixed appointment in the city's uh, cultural scene and uh, also a, tools, uh, a tool for promoting the UNESCO heritage and the Genoa brand as a cultural and tourist destination in, uh, in Italy, but also abroad. This picture uh, is a uh, chamber of the palace um, uh, Tobia Pallavicino, uh, cham uh, chamber of the commerce in Genoa. Uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, about the communication, uh, we can see that uh, at the beginning, uh, the UNESCO site and also Rolly Days was promoted with um, a traditional, uh, traditional media, traditional tools, uh, like press, press release, uh, educational, press educational, uh, radio and uh, list. Uh, list. Uh, reflect, uh, reflect a brochure, uh, a brochure. Starting from 2015, more and more digital uh, were, were introduced to support the promotion of, of the event, social network contacts, digital marketing campaigns, and also one app dedicated for, uh, to promote the, the historical palaces for, uh, for uh, at all, and also the addition uh, of event. Allora, due to, um, due to COVID pandemic, uh, at the event are cancelled in Italy. 
uh, and also in Genoa. And uh, everything uh, and uh, everything needs uh, to change. The holidays gets uh, holidays digital week. Uh, in um, due, due to the, the, the COVID, uh, more uh, cultural stakeholders uh, in Italy and also in Genoa decided to produce uh, digital events. Um, and uh, the, the municipality uh, can't lost the, the opportunity to inventar, invent, eh? to reinvent uh, in, uh, an, uh, an, ev an event uh, digital eh? and digital event. Uh, so uh, we decided uh, on May 2002 uh, to uh, produce uh, to, uh, 70, no, sorry, 70, 72 videos uh, and uh, to organize a landing page on visitgenoa.com for uh, host uh, this video. Now, uh, this is uh, a, a like for uh, permettere, uh, allow uh, to, uh, the, uh, to public to, um, to see the beauty heritage of Genoa uh, online, not in presence uh, for this edition, but uh, online. And uh, the, produ uh, the production of uh, this video has been uh, very, very complicated because uh, has been produced during the, the, the days uh, where Genoa was uh, red, uh, red lockdown. Uh, so it, it has been uh, more difficult to uh, produce the video and also to organize, uh, organize the, the communication. It has been a challenge also for, uh, for our office and our administration. Uh, our administration. Now I can, uh, we can see you a playlist of our videos, an example. Not 70, 70 video now, <laughs> only a, a, a little presentation. Okay. okay. With me, Gabriella Corrado. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody from works, Genova. <laughs> who works with me in uh, official uh, communication office. So, uh, I show you this uh, YouTube playlist. This is our channel, um, Genova More Than This. And this was the playlist published in May 2020. And as Marisa told you, we published, uh, we, we, we got online more than 72 videos as you can see here. And this is one of these, very short that I can show you. We can show you. Okay, so let's back to the presentation. Okay, all right. Bye. Okay. Allora, the web and the social media uh, campaign. Allora, the digital event um, is promoted for uh, one month from April to May. Uh, through a web and a social media campaign to communicate uh, the new format of events of event and uh, at the same time maintain the traditional appointment with the holidays. 
The main goal of a digital campaign was to promote knowledge of UNESCO heritage, but also bring the people, the audience, to the landing page and the video schedule. Uh, we can uh, show you some example of a social, uh, social Facebook and uh, Instagram advertising. Uh, we have uh, real, uh, realized um, uh, a book uh, photographico, a book, uh, a photo book um, essenziale, um, uh, basically for the advertising. Okay. Allora, uh, the results, the results of, of the campaign. Allora, allora uh, 900,000 video views, 900,000 video views, a big uh, result. Uh, one million uh, for hundred thousand social user reached. Over 70,000 social interaction, 76 national and international press release, TV and radio. Uh, during October uh, 20, 2020 and uh, also May 2000, uh, 2021, uh, with a gradual return to normality and the reopening of event in presence uh, in Italy, the event came back uh, in presence. But uh, even if some uh, um, digital content are developed to enrich the digital video collection on YouTube, the playlist on YouTube. Sì. Si. Okay, so now I show you some uh, video of the next edition. Yes. Okay, so this is the playlist about the the uh, 2020 october so as marisa told you many video was uh, published uh, were published uh, uh, um, for this uh, uh, edition as well and one of this is palazzo negrone agostino rolo one of the best in town Okay. Ma dal punto di vista storiografico, oh, la denuncia del volto brutale, oh, quella che un tempo, ma complice anche un certo eurocentrismo, definivamo la scoperta e che oggi assume no, invece i risultati della conquista. Ok. Ok. So. Ok. Allora, okay. ok, in ottobre 2021, the last edition of the Rolling Days, the event uh, <coughs> comes back to in presence. And uh, uh, we have uh, for a, a week, for a week, and uh, we have uh, uh, opened uh, 30 palaces to the, uh, the public. Uh, 41, six, uh, 40, 41, uh, 1,600 visitors in presence for the last edition. 
Ecco, uh, this is uh, an example of uh, um, advertising poster uh, in, uh, in the city for promoting uh, a special edition, uh, a week edition uh, of uh, Rolly, Rolly Days with another event like Rolly Shipping Week. Organic strategy, uh, and um, we use uh, uh, for promoting, uh, to promote this event, uh, a digital campaign, but we have a strong social media strategy in organic. We use uh, all our channels, uh, social channels, for, uh, to communicate, to promote uh, this event. Uh, Facebook, this Genoa, but also Facebook, Genova more than this, Instagram, Genova more than this, Twitter, Genova more than this. Uh, the channels, uh, social channels of our museum in Genoa, uh, as uh, Facebook, Museo di Genova, and also Instagram, Museo di Genova and also uh, the um, institutional uh, institutional channels uh, Genoa municipality uh, and uh, Facebook and uh, Instagram. We can see uh, the uh, high numbers of the channels that uh, we use for promote uh, for promoting this uh, this event and is. Uh, uh, very high the, the number of posts that uh, our social team had uh, have to promote have to create to create for uh, for uh, for promoting this we have also an um, also a special uh, special addition activities we have um, selected during uh, the last years local ambassador uh, in local ambassador in the city uh, who uh, uh, help us uh, to promote uh, to promote the, the, the event the, the site the unesco site and uh, this is an uh, efficient um, uh, um, way uh, because uh, in this uh, in this way we can reach another public different than that the, the public uh, that uh, usually follow our uh, social media. And uh, this, uh, this activity is also uh, free, gratuita. Free of charge. Free. Uh, and uh, another uh, in, relevant uh, activity is uh, organized with uh, relevant influencer in Italy. Valentina Ferragni, uh, a uh, relevant uh, influencer, Elisabetta Roncati, and uh, also Tommaso Cassissa. V uh, these are influen influencer in Italy, uh, relevant uh, for different uh, topics. Uh, Valentina Ferragni, for example, uh, for uh, la moda, for uh, fashion. Mm -hmm. Elisabetta Roncati, for uh, a target, a, a scientific target. Tommaso Cassissa is a new young for a new young target for the municipality is important now to promote uh, the UNESCO heritage uh, at uh, um, an internal inside uh, the, inside uh, a, a, a large people a large number of people not only uh, media, uh, of uh, medium, medium age. age but also new uh, new people young people uh, at the end uh, <coughs> The next edition of Rolly Days uh, will be in, uh, in May, next May. We are waiting for you in Genoa. Stay tuned. Thank you for attention. Thank you very, very much, Marisa. I was wondering if also Pietro, also, who's also with yeah. us, wanted to add something. Yeah. Yes, I will try to share my uh, screen, but Marisa, you have to un attimo Pietro che vediamo di just a second allora siamo qui come si fa qua ok ok thank you ok my presentation 
Good morning, everyone. My name is Pietro Toso. I'm an art historian with a degree in economics and management of cultural heritage. And uh, I actively collaborate with the municipality of Genoa in the organization of the Rolly Days uh, cultural event. And with this presentation, uh, I want to show you what this event is and how in recent years it has evolved into a live and digital model. Try to circumvent uh, the difficulties that the pandemic has created for the cultural heritage sector a sector where the contact uh, with the public is extremely important uh, because uh, of the contact with the uh, public. And um, now I try to explain to you what is the Rally Days. Uh, and uh, as uh, already mentioned by Marisa Cardella, it is the main cultural event dealing with the promotion of the, the UNESCO heritage of the city of Genoa. Uh, this event has been successfully held for 11 years with an increasingly a large audience from 2009 to 2019. The upward trend in the number of visitors has been exponential with an increase of more than 1000% in attendance. And uh, it went from uh, 11,000 visits in May um, 2009 to over 130,000 in October 2019, a record for the event. The success of the event is due to a winning formula that provides a diversified offer in each edition, but maintains a constant level of quality. The breadth and the quantity of the sites involved means that new and previously unvisited buildings can be opened on each occasion. But uh, during the event, uh, tourists uh, are accompanied uh, on their free visits by young professionals trained in the field of the humanities, which allows for immersive uh, involvement and uh, active participation in the knowledge of the city's heritage. They are not professional communicators, but specialized professionals cap capable of divulging, uh, who are trained every edition to develop uh, new technique and ways of narrating uh, heritage. In this way, the audience has to deal with young people under 35 age who can convey all their expertise in a fresh and precise way, each using their own characteristics and unity together in a team of almost 100 disseminators. The different language of the disseminators allows thinking about specific target audiences. The possibilities of drawing on a pool of professionals from all over Italy and in part from Europe makes it possible to diversify the methods of visit by guaranteeing language tours for foreign visitors. In this way, the impact of the communication campaign carried out before the event can be maximized in the field during the event. In addition, the early days, through its quality in the storytelling about cultural heritage, are promoters of the development of cultural tourism in the city. This generates a construction of value for citizens, but at the same time generates economic and social value for the entire city through direct economic impacts on the spending of visitors to the event and indirect impacts that favor productive activities in the area. All this has been, the, has been made possible by the municipality administration's decision to give continuity of growth to a project that over the years has always ensured to the, the construction of permanent dialogue structures beyond the events uh, renewing itself internally and innovating the way of thinking about heritage in the city. But of course, uh, the pandemic also marked the development of this event. In what way? Before the pandemic, the event was essentially conducted in a live form through a constant stream of people populating the city over the dedicated weekend. And everything was almost ready for the May edition when in March 2020, Italy entered the first wave of the spread of the virus, preventing the event from being held in the traditional way. And from the outset, it was clear the need to find an alternative to the in-person event in such a way that now, that the now fixed upon appointment with uh, visits uh, to uh, general's palaces could be maintained in a completely new way. So thanks to the idea of the scientific curator of the event, Giacomo Montanari, and the commitment of the administration, it was decided to create an entire week of digital appointments to allow the virtual visits of the Palazzi dei Rolli. In this way, the Rolli days went the, uh, were, event was the first in Italy to completely transform its offerings into a digital format, allowing everyone, even from lockdown, to access the city's most spectacular residences. 
It was therefore possible to win the challenge of transforming the pandemic from a misfortune into an opportunity for the event, which made it possible to rethink the way in which the city's cultural heritage is told. This made it possible to make a series of outputs with the realization of a large number of videos that continue to be produced to this day, always bearing in mind the involvement of young scientific disseminators. Obviously, virtual visits cannot replace visits in the present of the buildings, but the video turned out to be an excellent alternative, also thanks to the choice of filming some sites that were unseen and where live, live visits would never have been possible to implement. Since the start of the pandemic, four events related to the transmission of digital content have been realized. In addition to the early days digital week already mentioned, it was decided to realize the following events in live and digital format. Due to space constraints, the number of physical visitors during the last early days was necessarily uh, reduced compared to the one of the, uh, of the last pre-pandemic edition. So it was decided to maintain an hybrid offer that allowed even those who could not participate in the physical visits to still be able to interact with the Palazzi dei Rolli. Realizing uh, uh, these events was not easy because of the changing of the way of working. The realization of video and photo campaigns take time and requires a true knowledge of uh, the heritage, as well as non-trivial equipment. Thanks to the latest technologies such as 4K, gigapixels, or the use of drones, it has been possible to create quality video content um, where, however, the fundamental element has remained the scientific dissemination of the heritage. Speaking in front of a camera is different from speaking to people because there is no interaction and it is difficult to maintain the same vocal timbre throughout the visit. However, the role of the divulgator remained the same, giving continuity to a successful way of the event. But uh, the goals, uh, the goals of this uh, digital transformation are many and uh, can be summarized in these few points. The creation of a portfolio of digital videos on the city's cultural heritage not only allows the public to be untriggered uh, by the city's uh, uh, tourist campaign, but also enables students to get up close and personal with the spaces, frescoes and works of arts contained in the various buildings. But the main goal is perhaps to try to bring a younger public to the event. Young people are generally less attracted and interested in cultural tourism, and the digital is certainly an incentive to try to involve the under 30s in understanding heritage. The data, uh, the data seems to confirm a greater involvement of young people in the event following the digital campaign carried out in recent years with almost 40% of users at the last holidays in October 2021 being under 35 years of age. But digital also means the possibility to promote and communicate the city of Genoa also in the foreign countries. So one of the long-term goals of digitalizing the heritage is to bring visitors from all over the world in the city who can understand the beauty and importance of Genoa as a city of art that uh, has nothing to invite from other Italian cultural capitals such as Naples, Florence or Milan. I would like to thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you very much Pietro and thank you Marisa. Um, this is a very colorful uh, presentation and also thanks to the images we could also imagine the event. We have a few questions from the chat. One, I would like to go back to the previous question of uh, Marseille uh, that was asking about uh, the change of numbers of visitors uh, shifting from offline to online. Can you compare in any ways the, the physical visitor numbers with the uh, uh, digital visitor numbers? This is one question. And, and we had another question concerning the digital ambassadors. How many of them are there? What is your strategy of developing maybe a broader number of digital ambassadors? So how does this work? I leave to Marisa the answers. Okay, well, so the okay. question was yeah, the first question was the number of visitors to the holidays, physical and then digital, if they are comparable in any way. And then, you know, you can also compare with the physical plus digital later on.
Yeah, it's a, a, a good question, uh, Levente. <laughs> but uh, we can compare it the number. Cioè, the number of video views are uh, more, more uh, than the user uh, visitor uh, in presence because uh, in presence um, uh, the, the, the place of uh, lo spazio, the, the place of uh, buildings uh, is uh, limited uh, as a, is uh, small uh, in uh, on, on YouTube uh, the, the public uh, the user is uh, uh, infinity, infinity. Uh, can be can be more can, can be more large uh, can be more large um, uh, 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 certainly uh, the, um, the visitor uh, online are um, uh, different uh, from uh, from uh, from the um, provenienza from the, the from the destination and also the age uh, another uh, another thing the, the public the user uh, the digital user are more uh, are, are digital so um, uh, it's inter um, interesting for us uh, to have uh, interaction 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 uh, online uh, uh, this uh, could be a different uh, relevant uh, for us. Uh, the interaction uh, online uh, are, uh, are important for us. Thank you. Thank you, Marisa. Another question was uh, the number of digital ambassadors. I remember you, you used to have a number of Erasmus students who went back to the country and they actually were asked or encouraged to promote some of the things they saw in, in Genova. Also, uh, the Instagram group, local Genova Igers, were very instrumental in you know, disseminating the images of the Roli Palaces and, and the event itself. They had exclusive you know, visits when the, no, nobody else was there. So you, you had this quite sophisticated net, network or system of digital ambassadors. So how does it work? How many digital ambassadors do you have? Local ambassadors are only Genoese. Are, uh, are only Genoese, and they have selected uh, this, uh, this ambassador uh, from 2015, more or less. Uh, and we decided to, to choose uh, only Genoese uh, because it's important the knowledge of our city. Uh, of uh, and also on the historical uh, buildings and uh, historical um, heritage of our city. Uh, um, inoltre, uh, and uh, uh, for uh, having uh, an authentic storytelling of our cities, first of all, uh, we have to, to start from Genoese people who uh, know the city and uh, also the habitudine, the habits. The city, the street, the palaces, the culture, and also the habits, the habits of, uh, of the city. It's, uh, it's uh, for us a more authentic the storytelling. But uh, in the future, uh, we don't uh, exclude uh, the opportunity to have also influencers from, uh, from Italy. Uh, from Italy, we use a uh, uh, big influencer because the strategy is different. The storytelling is uh, affidato, is, uh, is uh, 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 affidato ai, ai locali. Um, the storytelling is more authentic if uh, it uh, has... Uh, Assigned to locals. Esatto, yeah. from, uh, 
local, local, local ambassador, local people. Uh, influ big influence is important because uh, of uh, because uh, uh, they have a large, a different audience. And we can promote uh, and spread the knowledge of our heritage, uh, heritage, cultural heritage are different for us. Yes. Okay, thank you very much, Marisa, and thank you, Pietro. Uh, I'm afraid we have to move on. I would have many other questions, but I think I will put some of them in the chat box. Uh, so that we can still uh, keep this discussion going. But I would like uh, to move on to Milan and I invite Mrs. Isabella Manichini from the city of Milan, who is the director of the entertainment area of the culture department of the Milan municipality. And it's also a particularly very interesting question to link it to the, the last discussion we had about uh, local and international visibility, because she has a long experience with working with the foreign ministries of uh, Italy, but also international promotion from the city of Milan, so international tourism promotion. So she has an international scope when it comes to communicating events. Uh, and I'm really curious uh, how did the digital transition you know, change your experiences and practices? Because in theory, with digital, we can uh, reach anyone, at least within uh, time, time zone uh, differences. So the floor is yours, uh, Isabella. Thank you very much, Levent. And thank you very much to all. Um, uh, this is for us really a, a wonderful opportunity to share with you stories and experience. And um, I'm going to move to another sector, as you said, uh, we are going to, uh, I want to present just some, you know, uh, witnesses, I would say some stories or some examples. So what we are trying to do uh, still now, because as you, as everybody knows, we, we really um, had to face something that, that has been totally new and, uh, and unexpected, I would say. And so uh, while Milano was, uh, you know, on uh, really um, jumping on the very high level, the, the, the most unexpected, uh, you know, um, successful level of um, promotion, international promotion and a lot of events. And uh, we were, um, I think we were very attractive, uh, thanks also to Expo, you know, and the, all, all, all the things that, that happened after Expo, we really um, were becoming um, uh, an attractive uh, city, which is not so, um, was not so used, you, was not in the mentality of the uh, Milanese people. No, Milano was uh, always a very business and productive city, less a touristic city. So it was really a, a wonderful moment for us. And then suddenly we had to face this uh, unexpected and uh, dramatic situation. And um, what we started to, to face uh, uh, about the, um, I would say the performing arts, generally speaking at the local level, um, due to the fact that everything was closed with the lockdown and the, in Italy, as you know, it has been, it was very severe. Everything was closed. Uh, all the halls, the theaters, the uh, concert halls, everything. Um, the, the, the problem we try to discuss together with all the stakeholders and all the players you know, that are very active in Milan was how to keep uh, a, a fruitful relationship with the with all the with the audience, you no, know, with all the citizens that were very used to uh, participate in um, uh, leisure and um, at, um, events. Uh, uh, they they used to go uh, often to theater to listen to concert and so on. Um, the first question was uh, how to how what we could do together to you know to make this uh, relationship alive and uh, possibly strengthen it and uh, 
use the opportunity of the, you know, the streaming or the, the use of uh, different mean uh, to get in contact with them and uh, if possible to increase the number of people um, participating in, uh, you know, performing arts events. And so um, I want to, to tell you that the situation is particularly because in this, I'm sorry, um, in the in Milano, we as municipality, we don't obviously we don't produce uh, plays or concert directly, but we support with a very strong uh, financial fund all the subjects, the, the organizations that. Uh, um, um, are active in in our city, and um, and so the first thing we we decide to do is that uh, through our public calls uh, that we use to uh, allocate resources to all the players, uh, we allow them to get uh, contribution also for. Um, events uh, organized and launched by internet, by the website or by, you know, uh, live streaming uh, events. And this was very important because otherwise we, we couldn't have the possibility even to, to um, uh, issue money, no? uh, considering that they were completely closed. Uh, for them, it was very important because they experienced in some way new opportunities to, to present their um, plays, their pro products. And um, the other thing we, we tried to do, this was the, the first thing. And uh, part of them were very good in, uh, you know, organizing contents uh, for, the web, for their website. I'm, I'm, I want to, um, to apologize because I, I couldn't uh, organize a, a, a presentation for this moment, but I will send you in a few days uh, because we are collecting yet some data because these are important. I want to tell you, for instance, the example I, I show, I try to show you the, or I will give you uh, some examples. So we have a very important uh, um, uh, orchestra, for instance, which is the La Verdi Filarmonica La Verdi. They they worked uh, all the the all all the from 2020 uh, since nowadays uh, they worked uh, um, to present uh, contents. Uh, I'm I'm looking for the slide. I'm sorry um, to to have their concerts uh, um, uh, streaming, and maybe I'm able to. Echo. And these are some data, as I don't know if you can see them. They had 21st, uh, 21 concerts in streaming and 3 million uh, people um, contacted by social and by YouTube. And uh, they are able to have, uh, as you, I'm, I'm sorry, this is in Italian, but I, I will translate for you. They have uh, monthly 130 uh, thousands contacts uh, and uh, you know listening on Spotify so they could really um, create a, an audience that uh, they would never uh, imagine in you know in the past uh, uh, considering that uh, a whole a concert hall can be uh, 1500 um, Yes, 1,500, yeah. mm, but no more, um, sometimes too, above all, if we speak about classical music, it's nothing more than 2,000, you know, aud audience uh, persons uh, listening to a concert. Um, um, then um, the, other, the, the other thing we, we discussed was about uh, the contents, uh, uh, because uh, what we uh, realized that uh, uh, to be attractive uh, on streaming, on social, you must uh, have specific uh, uh, contents. It's not enough if you transport to, you know, from the live 
to the internet or the website uh, your uh, contents. If you imagine a theater play, for instance, it, the risk is that is uh, it can be very boring not to follow because it's it's uh, so um, flat, so bidimensional. I would say no, you miss completely the 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 idea of participation to a, a theater play. So um, even our uh, partners uh, they realize that um, it's uh, it has been very important to to make the effort to create new content specific. For, so shorter, more effective, more emotional, and um, and some of them have been uh, very good in, in doing uh, this. And for instance, Teatro Piccolo, as you maybe know, uh, it's the European theater in uh, in Milano, and uh, they really had, uh, um, they create a bit, they built up a specific program only for uh, their website and for the streaming. So. Uh, from one end, they they use they have used their uh, archive archive, which is very very rich, uh, to make people uh, um, known about you know a lot of uh, traditional but very important uh, PS. On the other side, they create uh, pills uh, or you know small videos or things like that. And what they realize is that a lot, what is wonderful is that a lot of young people for the first time get in touch with this kind of uh, um, organizations of players. Normally in Milano too, the problem is always to attract young generations to the traditional, you know, uh, places, venues. But uh, uh, the ones that have been good uh, uh, have been able to attract uh, really uh, new generations to the to their uh, offer. Um, what we have done too as um, Comune di Milano, uh, we uh, we use our we have uh, a quite strong uh, um, network of you know social network media. Then we have a website which is uh, Yes Milano. Through this, we organize very nice uh, uh, digital events. For instance, uh, in Milano, traditionally uh, for Christmas time, we used to have uh, uh, in Piazza Duomo uh, an advent calendar. So every night, every evening in, in the Piazza Duomo, you could uh, listen to concert and we use um, a building. And every night we open, you know, the, the, the advent calendar is very traditional no moment of the uh, we used to have this kind of uh, or, uh, concert every night a new uh, windows of this building was opened and the concert and goes on every every evening and on the 24th there were all the windows open and all the um, the, the players uh, um, uh, play uh, uh, some Christmas carols or whatever. Uh, what we have done, what we did in uh, 2020 uh, was a, in, a, in a virtual advent calendar. So we called all the um, players of the city and we asked them to, if they wanted to participate in a virtual advent calendar. And uh, every evening at five o'clock, uh, we present uh, 15 minutes, 20 minutes of a concert or a play or, but most of them were prepared, you know, created for the, for this uh, event. Some of them could, uh, could use uh, um, some products that they have already uh, recorded, but part of them were, you know, new and was very, very nice. And we had a lot, a lot of, um, you know, contacts. The other thing was that uh, it al always during the pandemic, uh, uh, we used this uh, building that we have. This is a very, uh, very traditional, very important, uh, small, uh, we call Palazzina Liberty. It's the place where Dario Fo and Franca Rame started their, you know, their uh, uh, program of also political program. So for, for um, Milano, this is a very strong, uh, you know, venue, and uh, in there we we allow in this we 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 are in charge to coordinate activities in uh, in the Palazzina. But we give we have given the, this building 
to a lot of uh, concert uh, music organization and they organize a Palazzina Liberty in streaming. Every day for 20 days, uh, people could um, uh, get in touch with them by uh, Yes Milano, which is our website, and their website too, uh, to uh, you know uh, to listen to concerts or, or uh, their um, events. Uh, in this way, I think that we really could uh, uh, keep and enhance the relationship with our communities, that uh, they didn't feel uh, alone. And on the other hand, uh, all the players or the organization, cultural organization, could uh, uh, keep on working and, you know, paying workers uh, uh, and so nobody remained uh, um, aside or behind. The other thing, uh, the last uh, event that I want to uh, to tell you, it's about the, um, do you know that in Milano uh, um, in the last um, 10, six, seven years, we have developed uh, this uh, format, which is very typical of Milano, and it, this is spreading in this, these are the week and the city. Uh, these are weeks uh, or weekends dedicated to specific uh, items. So we have the uh, Piano City, the um, um, Art uh, Week, uh, the Milano Music um, Week, and the Milano Music Week in 2020, normally they are spread all over the, the city, no? So all the venues, all the uh, life club, all the theaters are involved in this, uh, uh, in this palincest, in these programs. Um, some of them we try to keep alive during the pandemic, uh, thanks to the digital uh, opportunities. And so the, the Milano Music Week was uh, kept alive in 2020. And uh, um, I will give you some data. Um, then I will send you everything. Uh, I, maybe I can show you also the data which are here. Um, the Milano Music Week is especially dedicated to the um, national and international pop music, but it's a very important event uh, for the also for the for for music companies, the uh, for the productions, and you know. So indeed, during this week, a lot of new um, songs, new um, the very famous singers are presented. They have their events. So they can talk to. To their audiences and um, so du during the Milano Music Week 2020 we had uh, 100 hours of uh, you know uh, broadcasting online they had uh, as you as you can read to uh, 52,000 and more hour um, of you know contacts and people that was watching and 500,000 um, I, I don't know I don't know what's the English for visualizzare when people get in touch with in uh, the and uh, views more, yeah more views. than 500,000 impression on the website on the Facebook pages and so on and um, and so, uh, what is the also the the um, uh, how do you say the, the heritage in some way that part of uh, for instance the Milano Music Week we had also in the 2021, uh, so this year in uh, it normally is in um, November uh, we have the live uh, edition, but it's true that we. Um, we are going to um, hybrid um, solutions. So we always have part of uh, the events uh, live and parts by streaming, or you know the live the live events are going also on a streaming way. So um, this is for sure one of the good results that in some way. Um, People are, are getting out from the traditional only means and they are using the opportunities of the, the web, uh, not the web opportunities, because it's true that the audience uh, um, 
the, the number of um, participants increase enormously. This is what Scala also too. Scala organized some uh, digital events. Uh, they had, uh, you know, more than two thousand two millions. Uh, uh, I would say spectacle uh, people watching the, the, the events. We, these are numbers uh, unbelievable. And it's true that in this way, if you use in a good way the, the opportunities of the streaming of the website, you can attract a lot of uh, uh, people then. And, uh, you know, in some way, um, um, and uh, make them more curious to then to live a, a, a live uh, experience. You now, for Scala, for instance, it's very important uh, to have always uh, people participating live in the theater. You know? and in this way, they they can they can use really the website, the opportunity of uh, being on the social on Facebook, Instagram. TikTok, they started with TikTok, TikTok too, to, to pull people to come uh, to Milan and to visit the, the Scala and, and uh, live the experience of being in the Scala. I will send you the, for sure, the, for us, December is a very, it's an awful uh, month because we have to close the budget. Uh, and this year we are uh, in charge with the uh, the opening of a, one of the most important theater in Milan is the traditional one, the Lyrico. That's why I, I couldn't uh, organize a specific um, presentation, but I'm sure that uh, from in the last, Days in the next days, I will be able to send you also a presentation that you can keep uh, as you know. Yes, thank you very much. I think we got a, a, a very good insight into uh, you know cultural events and digitalization in the last period of Milan. I have one specific question. Uh, I was really interested in what you mentioned that you you know you wanted to maintain the support to uh, cultural organizations, but also you kind of wanted them to do something for it. So go online, do their activities in, in digital format. So what kind of support would you give, or what kind of support did they need to move their activities online? You know, to to come up with another format, for example, for theater play, and also in what ways could you help? the audience, uh, like uh, audience development. Uh, what did you as a city hall could do or who were your partners in actually helping, you know, new digital events meet new uh, digital audiences? I think we could, we could do um, a few more things uh, that we are still, you know, imaging and uh, uh, analyzing. For sure, the, the, the first step was the, to ensure the financial support, uh, even with the hall closed and so on. But then I think that uh, uh, for sure we, we can use uh, better our, um, our um, social media network and our website. Because it's true that, and they also our newsletter, because it's true that we have, um, we have um, a hundred thousands of contacts, uh, and uh, we do, I don't I don't think that we still uh, exploit them in the um, uh, best way. We can do more for sure. We can um, organize also. I think that that um, uh, the players need uh, also um, a support in terms of uh, knowing better which are the opportunities. What what is true is that. Um, um, above all in Milano, for sure Milano, you know, is a very innovative uh, city. There are always things trans in transformation, etc. But in some way, um, I have the feeling that the, um, the companies were so used to have success, uh, to have always uh, audience, uh, that nowadays they really need a support to also to learn which uh, can be uh, new tools uh, to um, uh, to attract people uh, through the the opportunities of the digital uh, um, and how to integrate more than on and off uh, you know offer because it's uh, for sure that we 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 can't go back uh, uh, as it were. Um, two years ago, three years ago. But it's true that uh, 
from one end, it's very important to, to uh, keep uh, uh, strong the, the, the feeling that the live experience is something that you can't substitute. But uh, on the other end, that you can have other offers and other opportunities to live the you know the immersive experience through the digital and that in some way the two aspects can integrate in a very fruitful way i don't some sometimes you have the the feeling that all uh, people consider them alternative which are not uh, no and the second one is that uh, it's a sort of, uh, and so it's a competitor, no? It's true that we, by the digital uh, tools, you can have millions of uh, audience, but then there is the problem of the financial, you know, if you want to, to, to keep a theater or a concert also open, they need to sell tickets. I, I, I say this in a very, you know, rough way, but in some way it's true. So we have to, to, to support them in learning more, which are the opportunities. In this sense, I think that we are all ignorance in this sense. So I think that there is a, a knowledge that we have still to, to um, to have, to, to, to build up. Uh, do you know that in Milano, we have also this, this new digital uh, museum, I would say, the MEET. Uh, and we are trying to, to work with, with them because in, uh, they can help us a lot uh, to develop this kind of knowledge. But uh, I think that we need uh, specific projects, um, you know, also to, to um, to make them more confident and more um, digital is not an alternative, it's not a competitor, it must be, you know, uh, uh, on your side and not against your side. This is my feeling. Yes, thank you very much. Um, thank you. Thank you to all. It was a pleasure, really. Thank you. I encourage everyone to use the chat box. So maybe we can still have uh, Isabel for a few minutes if you have any specific questions. And I would very quickly move on to Nantes because we are running a bit late. And we would uh, like to hear Cédric Huchet about the Scopitone Festival, which is indeed uh, a digital arts and current music festival. So I think, I don't know if you are with us. Maybe we, uh, Isabel, if you could stop sharing the screen then we would have uh, everyone's face here. Yes, I'm trying Thank to, you. to, ah, uh, okay. Thank you. I was looking for the, the right, uh, you know. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. So I don't know if uh, um, yeah, Cedric is with us. No, Cedric couldn't uh, join for okay. a technical uh, issue. He couldn't uh, um, enter the, the, the meeting. Miss um, Tual Elsa, Miss Elsa Tual, so, uh, sorry, will um, will uh, will talk a little bit on uh, on uh, Scopitone Festival uh, of Nantes and um, if uh, if she wants uh, we can um, we can um, put the, the the video of that Sandrick the Sandrick uh, um, sent us or what she she wants as a support perfect thank you then as the floor is yours Yes, hello everyone. So, uh, well, thank you very much for your invitation to participate to your event and congratulations uh, indeed for your very interesting European event. Uh, I would like to apologize my colleague Cédric who could not uh, get into Zoom, unfortunately. Uh, he has prepared an interesting PowerPoint, so um, I will be able to present you uh, to say a few words about this uh, digital festival, and then I think uh, we could display the, um, the film he sent us. What do you think, Barbara? Yes, of course, when you want to, I can, uh, I can share my screen and put the, the, the video he sent us. Yeah, so okay. I'm very sorry, I'm not uh, a professional uh, uh, concerning this festival, no but uh, I can tell you uh, a few words. So uh, this um, Scopitone Festival uh, is an international event dedicated uh, to uh, electronic uh, culture and digital arts. And uh, today in September, we had uh, the 19th edition. So um, 
Yesterday, uh, last year would be a, a big event for the 20th uh, anniversary of this festival. So it lasts uh, for 10 days and uh, every year it attracts between uh, 25,000 and 50,000 uh, festival goers, depending on the format and uh, um, it features about uh, 60 artists uh, every year. So during the day and in the evening, at night, uh, there are some music, choreographics and uh, some multimedia performances. And um, all the, the, all pub, the public space are used uh, and uh, they are transformed uh, and there are some bases for uh, digital technologies. So there are some conferences, some workshops, some roundtables, and there are some professional meetings. Um, it is mainly aimed at uh, students, researchers, artists, and digital professionals, but uh, it's also an opportunity to open the debate and uh, to learn about new technologies. And uh, what is interesting is that festival uh, is open uh, to young audiences. There are more and more events uh, targeted to, this, to young people. And um, there are also events organized for schools. And uh, what we can uh, underline is that uh, Scopiton is um, underlining uh, the importance of having a balance uh, between a balance to get uh, the same number of uh, uh, female and male uh, performers. So this year, in the, there were 65% of uh, artists who were female. So when we were talking about inclusion, uh, this is uh, very important for the festival. So here is what I can say about this uh, festival. It, uh, it is every year in Nantes uh, at the beginning of September. Uh, I will put uh, in the chat uh, the email address of Cédric Huchet, the art uh, festival director, who will be uh, very pleased to answer your questions. And uh, we can, I think, Barbara, we can launch the two videos um, that are available on the website, maybe. Barbara, maybe it's better to, to put the other video on the previous page. They are shorter. Can you hear me? <laughs> no. Barbara. Sorry, <laughs> I could I could hear you, but I was muted. Uh, I have another another video that is uh, two minutes. Maybe is uh, is that that I can uh, because uh, I think that would help us stay more in time because we are running. Okay, okay. I hope uh, let's um, one moment. I will I will check the. Uh, but it is, yeah, it is Scopitone 2016, maybe it's not the one. Uh, no, it's uh, on the web page you were sharing before. Ah, okay. Okay, the first one is okay, uh, Elsa? I will, I will, uh, okay, I will, um, I will share my screen. Is the, the, the first video for Elsa, the, this one? Uh, yes. One? Okay? Okay, great.
If there is no sound, maybe I can ask a question in the meanwhile to Elsa. If uh, with 20 years of experience in organizing a digital festival, no, you, you, you started as a digital festival. So if the COVID-19 pandemic and lockdowns bring any difference to you or it was just business as usual, or you felt that suddenly there's more space and more visibility for you because of the, the way everything, all cultural events uh, transformed into digital? Um, well, I can just say a few words about it, but uh, the festival could not uh, happen in, in the same way, but uh, um, the artist had a, a new way to, to work and to propose new things. And uh, we all saw the imprints of uh, digital tools to communicate. Uh, to work and uh, to to connect and uh, this art festival um, as it is a, a digital art festival it is uh, also I would say more accessible because uh, there was also things uh, ava um, available on uh, the website so people were not going to the different places in the city to see something but they just uh, got connected so i think that more people also were implied or got interested in that festival thank you because we you are your festival is five years older than facebook for example so it's uh, it's quite something to start a digital audience and a digital communication digital events uh, 20 years ago so thank you, Elsa. Thank you, everyone. I think it's time to go for a nice lunch break. Thank you all for your contributions. This was, I think, a very exciting morning. We will continue in the afternoon at 2. I would suggest that, that please try to be back at 2 because we have a long afternoon as well, focusing on the importance of digitalization in European and extra-European programs and networks, focusing on uh, Eurocities and URC, the International Urban uh, Collaboration Program, and before that, I hope you will have a great lunch. If we were now in Genova, I'm sure we would be taken to a delicious restaurant and have a, a pasta with pesto or all kinds of delicious things you can imagine in Genova. So I hope you will have the opportunity to, uh, to do this anytime soon, maybe at the time of the holidays. I will go for a much more, much sadder, much more, uh, much less promising little lunch, but uh, we'll be back with you at two o'clock. Thank you very much. Thank you, Levente. See you on uh, two. Thank you. Thank you bye all. Bye. 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 I hope you had a uh, I hope you had a nice lunch and I hope you don't mind that we are recording this session, as you heard. Uh, I would like to repeat a few things about the protocol. So if you don't speak, please mute your microphone. That will help us better uh, understand each other. Also, we have a chat box. Uh, that we really encourage you to use it for questions, comments. Uh, you know, when you notice something that is, you share the same challenge, the same issue in your city, we are here to create this kind of dialogue as well. So please don't be shy. Think about your questions, make comments. We will also have uh, Q&A sessions uh, after each presentation. So if you write your uh, questions in the chat, uh, I can read it. We can... Uh, we can have the speakers directly answer them. But anyway, this is also kind of a parallel uh, layer of our conversation. So this afternoon, we will focus on the importance of digitalization in European and extra European programs and networks. Although some extra European networks also are European programs as we will learn from uh, IURC, the International Urban Cooperation Program, where Mr. Edgardo Sala, the deputy team leader for uh, IURC Latin America, will tell us. After this, we will focus on the experience of Mar del Plata in Argentina with Mr. Santiago Bonifatti, who's a government secretary uh, in the city hall of Mar del Plata. And this is a city that participates in the EURC uh, program. Then we will uh, hear here, experiences of Barcelona with the, Mrs. Paula Boet, uh, from the who's the chair of the um, knowledge uh, 
forum of Euro cities uh, and also works with the Cities Coalition for Digital Rights within the Barcelona City Council. And then we will hear more about the Knowledge Society Forum of Euro cities, uh, a little bit about the background and experience and activities of the last years with Mr. Lodewijk Nodzai, uh, who is the policy officer of the Knowledge Society Forum, and Mr. Joan Butler, uh, who is the technical chair of the Knowledge Society Forum, uh, also working in the International Affairs Department of the City of Barcelona. And we will close uh, at the end, but not least, with uh, experiences from uh, the city of Debrecen in Hungary. Uh, Debrecen, uh, that is a member of the Digital Citizenship Working Group of the uh, Euro Cities that was launched by the city of Genova. And we will hear from Mrs. Marianne Vamos Mocher, who was also our partner already in Interactive Cities. So we have a nice group of people that uh, some of us have been working together. Some of you are new to this collaboration, but I think it's very interesting to see how different elements, different uh, you know, programs focusing on digital transition and communication in relationship with urban transformation and urban development, uh, they can be built one on another. So let's start a little bit with uh, IURC, the International Urban Cooperation Program that links European cities with uh, cities in other continents. Uh, Especially if I know correctly, Genova is very active in working in this network with Latin American cities. And therefore we have with us Mr. Edgardo Sala, Deputy lead, Team Leader for the IURC Latin America, who's speaking with us from Mexico City, where it is right now a bit before 7 a.m. So we thank you very much for waking up so early and starting the day with us. Edgardo, the floor is yours. If we would like to hear a little bit about how your programs uh, help sustainable urban development connect with the team of digitalization in smart cities. Thank you. Thank you, Levente. And it's my pleasure to be here. So uh, just give me a second just to share my screen. Okay. Um, let me know if you can see my screen now. Yes, so perfect. Yes, yes, perfect. Okay, uh, so thank you, Levente, and good afternoon to everyone. And thank you to EU Digital, the city uh, of Genoa, for inviting IOEC uh, Latin America uh, to participate in this online seminar. Uh, my name is, uh, uh, as Levente said, my name is Edgardo Sara, I'm the deputy team leader for the International Urban and Regional Cooperation Program, or known as IOEC Latin America, which is financed uh, by the European. Uh, union. Uh, the goal of today's presentation is just to provide an overview of the program, uh, followed by how it plans to support cities and regions in their pursuit of digitalization strategies and innovation. So uh, what is IRC uh, Latin America? Uh, so the program, program is the second phase of, of IUC, which uh, took place uh, or was implemented between 2016 and 2019. Uh, the goal of the program is to lead uh, and develop a decentralized international and urban regional uh, cooperation supporting the external dimension of the European Commission priorities, uh, uh, notably the Green Deal and the digitalization agenda. Uh, in particular, uh, the program seeks uh, to promote uh, urban exchange of best practices in urban development and uh, regional uh, innovation. And IRC is implemented in five geographical areas, including uh, North America, uh, Latin America, China, Asia, Australasia, and of course, uh, Europe. Um, we are um, in Latin America. Uh, we are working in uh, six countries, uh, Argentina, uh, Brazil, Chile, Colombia, Mexico, uh, and Peru, where we were able to select uh, 12 cities and 10 regions um, that have been working through uh, either pairs or thematic cluster with European uh, counterparts. So uh, just to go very briefly in what uh, the cities uh, regions are, um, as you can see uh, on the map, I will go very briefly through the pairs uh, because we don't we don't have much time, but. Uh, just to mention very briefly, in Brazil, we have Fortaleza, Sao Paulo, Manaus has been paired with Essen, uh, Milan, and Naples. Uh, in Italy, uh, Mexico, 
We have the, the cities of Emosillo, Merida, Guanajuato, which has been paired or working with Veras and Hungary, farming in Italy and Kona in Italy. And the topics these all these cities are working on are very uh, varied, are very diverse. I mean, they are working on the topics such as waste management, uh, water management, digitalization. In some cases, we'll look into that uh, later on. Um, so. In the case of uh, Colombia, we were able to select and work with uh, Cali and Barranquilla that were afterwards paired with Mala and Ancilacho. And this is uh, the kind of a big cluster. These four cities have decided to work together and they're working on, um, on urban renewal and uh, the preservation of natural uh, key strategic areas. Their city is also working on urban gardens which is an important uh, best practice that Rome is willing, and Ancilacho and Rome are willing to share with other cities. Um, and the cities in Chile, Puerto Montt, Punta Arena, has been paired with uh, Piraeus in Greece and Umeo in Sweden, while in Peru, uh, the city of Piura has been working with Almeria. Some of the criteria to be, ah, sorry, and Mar de Plata with Genoa in Italy, uh, working in digitalization, I will look into that later during the presentation. And the criteria to be to have the cities per this way is that they are sharing like um, common objective and challenges, uh, similarities like topography, or for instance, the cities of Piura and Almeria in Spain, both cities are dealing with um, or have experience in water management and that have been wanting to work on that and sustainable agriculture, for instance. So um, we took into account the similarities and challenges and common interests in order to pair these cities. And that's the case of Mar de Plata and Genoa, I will see later during the presentation. Uh, for the regional component of, of the program, uh, we, were, we selected 10 regions in Latin America and they were paired with the regions in Europe. And the regions are like Mendoza and Tierra del Fuego in Argentina with Northwest uh, in, in Romania with Polske, Voivodaship in Poland. Uh, in Brazil, Paraná, and Silesia. This is a, an, an interesting pairing. We will also talk very briefly about it because uh, both uh, regions have a very strong ICT sectors. And it's a, it was an obvious choice from the beginning that they would be paired uh, together. Um, the regions of uh, Magallanes and Ostrobotnia and in Finland, both are working on uh, renewable energies and are looking at environmental policies. Uh, the regions of Atlantic and Colombia were paired with Northeast uh, in Romania and Coimbra in Portugal, while in Mexico, Chihuahua and Colima are working with Cantabria in Spain and Attica in Greece. And in Peru, finally, we have the regions of Pura and La Libertad with a strong uh, um, agricultural potential that are working with Extremadura and Central Macedonia in Greece. So uh, how does the program uh, support uh, the, different, the different pairings that has been formed? The, the idea is that the program uh, provides a virtual in -person, and in-person tools to facilitate uh, the exchange of information and knowledge sharing in, the, in these different best practices they are have identified. As I mentioned, this, uh, the topic of collaboration can be as diverse as tourism, world management, uh, regional innovation, digitalization, uh, and so on. Um, we will promote uh, the participation of cities and regions in 12 international uh, networking events. Uh, we will also carry out 44 study visits. I mean, the, the cities and regions in Latin America will be able to visit our counterparts in Europe and vice versa. And also we are organizing uh, 20 thematic uh, webinars. And um, speaking of uh, webinars, uh, just like la last week, we were able to organize a, a webinar exploring the, the link. This is our, was our second webinar of the program. But we were looking at exploring the link between digitalization and smart strategies and social inclusion. Um, the, we believe that the webinar provided um, an introduction into digitalization. Um, some, we, we, we were able to explore some of the main concepts, uh, technologies uh, used in, in some cities, and some of the main challenges for implementation of these technologies. Um, we were able to dis also discuss um, how smart strategy, strategies can improve the provision of public services. Uh, in order to make them more efficient, uh, sustainable, uh, and responsible, responsive to citizen uh, needs. 
Uh, but on the other hand, we also spend a lot of time in this webinar discussing some of the challenges uh, these new digital era are uh, imposing to see it to the to the cities. So, for instance, uh, uh, some of the challenges we discuss is uh, as societies become more digital, how it can increase inequality to, as a result of the gaps in digital education or, or internet internet coverage. Uh, other concerns that we also discussed during the, this webinar and what were an important part of the conclusions was how data collections uh, ensures uh, representations among different uh, uh, groups and so this um, uh, we can avoid biases in public policy uh, formulations for instance when it comes to policies uh, uh, gender policies or we are dealing with uh, uh, unrepresented uh, groups that's how sometimes this information is missing in data collections uh, when we, we collect data uh, we also um, uh, an important conclusion was also that how the technology is just only a tool uh, and some of the most important changes at the municipal, also, also at the regional level, uh, uh, take time to implement as more like a progressive uh, process. Uh, and, and these changes take takes time because the most important steps towards uh, uh, digitalization agenda, uh, it's uh, changes in put in a uh, organizational culture. Um, and this requires time, like shifting power structures and decision-making processes within at the, municipal, uh, at the municipal level, it's something that takes time, uh, but that's in the most important part. Uh, and the, digi the digital component, the technological part, is just a tool. Um, and it's, uh, so these processes always take time. Um, so I think we the webinar, uh, this particular webinar was very interesting. Um, it could have extended for hours, but uh, uh, hopefully we will be able to organize uh, a second webinar, a second part very soon, especially in addressing the how to manage data collection, which was one of the most important topic of discussion during this, the first then, and how we can use big data for, for policy formulation, looking at those biases that, 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 could, ha that could happen when we do not collect data and processes, process the data um, correctly. Okay, so how is the IRC also program with this looking to support the digitalization strategies of the different cities and, and regions? Uh, so uh, one of the main difference between the, the first phase of IUC and the second phase of uh, IRC is that we are organizing the work of cities and regions in three thematic networks. I already mentioned some of the topics the cities are, are working, cities and regions are working on, and they are uh, organized in, in three main thematic uh, networks. The first one is ecological transition and green deal. The second one is urban re and regional renewal. And the third one is innovative and sustainable and carbon neutral ecosystems. We have also a fourth um, a thematic network dealing with more like cross-cutting challenges. And this is where the digital transition and smart city component um, uh, comes to the program. It's, um, and just, just to mention that uh, the digital transition of smart city topic has been one where we have received uh, the most interest from all cities and, and regions. And just to give you a few, a few examples, some of the cities and, and, and regions and pairings that have shown interest or are already working on this topic. So, we will look and I'll present some best practices uh, very briefly with Fortaleza and Hermosillo. Uh, Mar de Plata and Genova, as present today, have a lot of experience. And I will go very briefly because we have Santiago Bonifati's presentation uh, later on. And also the regions, for example, Paraná, Silesia, Bogodeshi, and Atlantic and Northeast Romania. As I mentioned, Paraná and Silesia are, are like two regions that are, have very strong ICT sectors, but and so they also share many challenges together. So just to go very briefly to uh, some of the base cases or examples of what cities are working on, how we can support that exchange of ideas and share exchange of, uh, exchange of information for policy formulation. Uh, in this slide, we can see the case of Fortaleza and Hermosillo, uh, Fortaleza in Brazil and Hermosillo in, in Mexico. Uh, we consider these are two very innovative uh, cities in, in Latin America. That are using digital tools in this particular case to improve uh, waste collection, recycling, and social cohesion. Uh, in the case of Fortaleza, 
they have implemented eco points or uh, for waste collection through throughout the city, um, encouraging the population uh, by providing uh, credit credits on energy bills. Um, the eco points, as uh, you can see in the picture on the left, are also used by construction workers um, who receive credits credits on digital accounts, uh, which is then which are then used in stores and local businesses that the municipality have a, 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 a rich agreements with. Uh, and I think efforts like in the case of, of Fortaleza requires policies that integrate the private sector, but also the development of user-friendly apps and financial instruments that are accessible to everyone. Um, another program in Fortaleza, but I don't think we have the time today to discuss much is uh, Recyclo. Uh, is, which encourage recycling through electro micro mobility and promoting the social inclusion of waste uh, collector. Similarly, uh, uh, the city of Hermosillo in Mexico is implementing Bicicland, uh, both a very similar program with the both leaders are looking also to, to learn from, from one another. And Bicicland is a female entrepreneurship uh, program where an, uh, an app, the, a new app that connects the population with women on uh, electro assisted bicycles, providing home service collection for the sustainable um, uh, disposal of, uh, of waste. Uh, so do we connect, uh, they are connecting the, the in Spanish it's uh, bicicladoras, like these uh, in, in recyclers, with people needing these services at home. Uh, so this project not only contributes to the social inclusion of women, they create an economic opportunity for them, but also contribute to the city recycling effort. And, and I, as I mentioned, this requires a, a joint collaboration between city officials, entrepreneurs, the private sector, uh, develop, uh, develop, uh, requires the development of an app and financial instruments. So, and just very briefly, this is um, the case of, uh, of course, we'll hear more from from Santiago after my presentation, but uh, the city of Genoa and Marta Plata are working on digitalization, um, how to improve. Um, it's, I think we, it's important to highlight that the effort that both are doing in, in sharing their experience in fostering citizen, citizen participation and a more efficient and streamlined, streamlined uh, provision of public uh, services. Uh, I think uh, both city through the RC program will carry out the study visits, as I mentioned, uh, participate in international networking events and organize uh, joint uh, workshops and webinars to learn from one another. And actually just the first workshop, uh, the technical workshop that uh, the both cities uh, uh, took place uh, just a few days ago when the Genova staff presented a citizen uh, file uh, program. And, and as I mentioned, the regions of uh, Paraná and Silesia are, are very similar in the sense that um, both are right now working on their areas of cooperation, but both are going to work on, uh, at the end of the day on digitalization and the promotion of ICT strategies and smart strategies. Um, uh, both regions possess some of the highest concentration of ICT uh, companies in their, in their countries, um, with companies were, uh, on the from uh, working on from soft, software development to artificial intelligence uh, to other IT services. Uh, so uh, one of the common challenges uh, and goals for both regions is to both build a support system for the ICT industry, uh, particularly looking at uh, how the higher education system can bridge the gap, the skill gap in, in the regional labor market. Uh, so. Both regions are facing common challenges and uh, also opportunities, and I, we feel that they can gain substantial knowledge uh, from one another, from the development of uh, educational policies, uh, how to promote the uh, digital innovation hubs and digital solutions for public services. So, uh, how? What are the next steps for your seeing supporting them? Um, cities and regions working on digitalization and smart strategies. So we are looking at the potential of creating a thematic cluster uh, led by champions as uh, Genova uh, or Mar de Plata, who, who might be able to share their experience and best practices with other cities and, and regions. Uh, we also want to encourage uh, the participation of our cities and regions and other key stakeholders in the ICT sector or academia or in civil society in international networking events with an, with an presence of ICT firms and decision makers. So 
For instance, one of the, uh, the first events we're looking at participating next year in March is the Smart City Expo in Curitiba, uh, in Curitiba Brazil. Uh, finally, we will uh, look into organize uh, thematic webinars on study visits uh, with the aim of building a capacity and sharing best practices among public officials. Uh, and I think uh, all, all in all, um, uh, events like this one, like this seminar, are standing opportunities uh, for mutual learning and fostering a dialogue uh, in order to improve uh, public policy formulation and the articulation of strategy between key st uh, stakeholders. Um, so thank you again. I, I want to thank you again to the city of Geneva for inviting me to, for, to this meeting um, and IORC uh, to this seminar. I'm looking forward to listening uh, and interacting with the other panelists. So uh, thank, you, thank you again. Um, um, thank you very much, Edgardo. Uh, somebody from the, from, on the chat asked if we can find more details somewhere about the good practices. Maybe if you can share some links in the chat that would help us navigate through the all the good practices here. And I have one or two specific question. Um, one is about you know policy policy context in general. So of course Europe is very diverse. Latin America is very diverse, but uh, still we kind of have an idea of of uh, some shared policy frameworks uh, at least in Europe for sure. So how much do you see that digitalization has a different role in urban development in the European policy context or in the Latin American policy context? So how much digitalization can actually lead the way or can you know, disrupt or, or interfere with other fields as well, uh, depending on the, the different uh, contexts, uh, policy and social and economic contexts? Um, so I'm curious, what do you think about this? I think, in, 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 thank you for your question. I think in, in Latin America, we see also some cities are looking at different ways of integrating digitalization also into other uh, important policies for their respective cities. Uh, like for instance, what we saw as an example of digitalization, but not only as a way of improving the provision of public services, but also of achieving other goals, important goals for the cities or for the federal government, such as social cohesion or reducing urban poverty. So that's why we see the cases of cities and, and in, or cities in Brazil, we see more interest of using it as a way of incorporating entrepreneurs and in, uh, addressing uh, gender inequality, Informality in Latin America, most of our economies are very informal, um, like between usually between 40% to 50% of, of employment tends to be happening in the formal economy. So then digitalization becomes a tool to bridge, to bridge that gap. So I, I think there are a small difference in terms of how, what the priorities are for policy making. Uh, but also there are common uh, challenges as uh, the cities of Genoa, Mar del Plata are shown. Uh, besides the interest of some cities on working on more like social cohesion, there are also still, uh, we can learn from cities in Europe that were more advanced in terms of how they are, have been able to use digitalization to improve, improve and streamline the provision of public services. And that's why we see cases like Mar del Plata and Genoa uh, working, working together. But definitely I see, not only the local agenda of municipality, but also the federal, the in the case of the state or federal agenda, influence, influencing how digital tools can be used to address or other other challenges that the cities are facing. In the case of Latin American informality, urban poverty, and so forth. Thank you, Edgardo. I have one last question, and if anyone has a question, please don't hesitate. So you can also use the chat. It's a little bit about exchange between between uh, Latin America and, and Europe because we we saw uh, of course all the European cities learn from Porto Alegre now participatory budgeting so there's a lot of models that are actually making it to Europe from Latin America probably there are other things that make make it from Europe to Latin America yeah. uh, as well. What would you see? And, and then, of course, some of this exchange happens spontaneously. Some of it is structured, like uh, International Urban Cooperation Program is, is a structure to help this. For you, what would be the next step to strengthen links or exchange? Um, like, 
where, where do you think this program should go if you were the funding body behind uh, this program? I'm also asking yeah. this because you, in Europe, you know, there's a, there will be a new funding period, a new structure for all the urban related uh, funding for European cities. And it's, uh, it's quite an interesting question. How could we upscale all these issues that you talk about as well? Yeah, that's, I think that's always the, the biggest challenge for programs like these are encourage uh, the exchange of best practices. Of, uh, it's always usually the funding is the, <laughs> the biggest challenge because that the funding allows you to scale up uh, uh, the efforts. But we, so we are concentrating um, on uh, achieving um, uh, a small pilot project. We are looking at, uh, may, at the first step of like cities uh, learning from one another and just uh, concentrating and identifying a small, a small pilot project that they can do at the beginning. Um, for instance, the success would be for us if the city actually is looking at what other city is doing and learn from it and actually uh, take a look into their own local policies and it's able to implement something at a small scale. Um, so then the, the, the results and the learning, mutual learning just becomes tangible and real. Uh, yes, I think that what we want to do, uh, uh, how we want to support cities also to connect them with the potential sources of funding, uh, multilateral agencies, development banks, uh, uh, that I think that's the, that's the biggest opportunity that we can provide to them in order to scale up those interventions. So we will promote uh, going small first, implement pilot projects, small, uh, learn uh, some of implementing locally some of the best experiences they are able to share for the next couple of years. But the biggest goal for us is also to connect them with potential, potential sources of funding, because the funding is actually what allows those small interventions to scale up. Um, although they probably will not provide uh, funding directly, I think we, we will do our best effort to connect all the different stakeholders and the city officials to potential sources of funding to key uh, decision makers within financial institutions uh, so they can scale up uh, those interventions. But the important part for us is that we look at the, the mutual learning actually uh, is being implemented. It uh, takes place and then it's uh, our second goal it would be how we scale them up through certain, finding different sources of uh, funding. Thank you, Edgardo. Let's move on to uh, Mar del Plata. We heard a lot from Edgardo about uh, cooperation between Genova and Mar del Plata. So I think we we're all very curious to see more, uh, more in a more tangible way what's happening in Mar del Plata. So we have here uh, Santiago Bonifatti from the City Hall of Mar del Plata. The floor is yours, Santiago. Hello, good morning for us. Uh, good afternoon for you all. Are you hearing me right? Okay. Yes. Okay. Let me share my screen. Okay. I'm going to tell you a, a few things about my city. Mar del Plata is the main tourist and seaside resort in Argentina. It lies on the Atlantic Ocean, only 400 kilometers from Buenos Aires. Mar del Plata has a coastline with cliff bays and wild beaches combining nature and outstanding facilities and high quality services. It's nightlife, theaters, tango, folk, music shows, clubs, casino, museums, sports, adventure, and rural activities offer a variety of options for tourists and those who come to Mar del Plata to take part in different events, conference, conventions that are hosted in the city. The strategic plan is the result of work carried out jointly and collaboratively with different reference in the area, the academic and the science and technology institutions of the city, with which we elaborate and implement a series of programs and actions to encourage the creation and the development of technology-based enterprises and entrepreneurs, link knowledge companies with the entire local industry to promote the incorporation of technology 
in their commercial and productive process, making them more efficient and competitive, improving, improving productivity, making processes more flexible, generating new business and creating quality employment. Develop activities aim of raising the vocation for technology creation in young people, showing them the opportunities that it offers and encouraging them to study related courses to cover the high level demand of this industry. Build ownership in the society of Mar del Plata as a city of knowledge. As the plan was developing, the, the technological district of knowledge and innovation was created in a founding neighborhood of the city where the establishment of companies connected with knowledge is encouraged to the gain, train, sorry, the granting of a set of credit facilities and benefits. In addition, it generates public and private investment, revitalization this important area of the city. The technological district boosts current technology company, promotes the development and establishment of new companies, the boosting the knowledge economy in industry, generates new quality, high paid jobs, provides more competitiveness to the local industry, positions the local technology sector, encourages young people to become creators of technology. It represents the lighthouse of innovation, symbol of the new productive model of the city. In the context of the pandemic SARS COVID-2 time, the municipality of General Pueyrredon, where Mar del Plata City is our capital, had to face a known and unexpected challenge which involves a change of paradigm to solve particular situation. High dependence on face-to-face -face citizens reduces that we that were carried out in the municipality. Back of strategy lies to paper free or paperless, orientated to the citizens as well as administration relation to their own employees weak coordination among different agendas of government area. So we, we, we try to get four objectives. The objective number one, much has been discussed about the incorporation of technology in the local public administration, the strengthening of public-private alliances, citizen participation mechanism, and the strengthening of bureaucracy all elements orient, oriented to good governance. The, the challenge now is how to achieve the interaction of all these elements in an effective and efficient way. And this is where a central element arises, the organizational culture of public administration. The second objective was there's no, no technology to innovate policy or possible articulation in the people involved in the public policy process and decision makers do not over this process. These actors are a fundamental part of their construction if they perceive themselves as agents of change. Here we have a first approach to the problem. If any proposed initiative is not treated as the part I think we might have a, yeah, okay, you're back. Okay, I'm back. Yes. Okay. There is, I, I was saying, on the one hand, our fragile economic situation prevents us from thinking about large investment projects in the field of technology. Therefore, promoting public private collaboration becomes an ideal tool to solve this situation. On the other hand, there is an element of this association that must be taken into account. The dynamics of cities demands. 
This approach expresses that far from the universal products that technology company develop, we move forward to a dynamic model where the solution they offer is feedback from city's dynamic dyna demands and the state company citizen link is the strengthened. This view on the problem forces us in the pandemic context to promote this strategy as a priority and to implement solution based on dynamic on digital resilience. Number four, the program implementation implied strengthening the articulation among different government areas, promoting paperless, maintaining the level and quality of service to the citizen, avoiding people circulation, and meeting the demands of the municipality health system in a context of permanent change as a result of the advance SARS-CoV-19 in our territory. And it was organized through three lines of action. One, remote service to citizens. Two, support from the government office of health and security. Three, management of public employees. So technology per se for us is not a solution. It's a tool that from a state logic show its potential when becoming dynamic. The strategic alliance with local government actors and working of the organizational culture are essential in order to keep all those involved engaged to reduce changing resistance and to break the myth that actions cannot be changed because they were always done the same. It's difficult to think of the state today as an omnipresent actor with the capacity to respond to all demands at all times. It is here the strategic alliance with the private sector acquires relevance, and therefore their feedback helps to build a more inclusive and resilient society. So, thank you. I'm sorry I have to read my presentation. I I have a little English problems, but I I, I expect that you have understand everything that I was trying to explain. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Santiago. And I think we should all speak Spanish, well, I guess. This Spanish. is a word language as well. Um, I'm really okay. curious about a bit, maybe more practical issues of cooperation with Genova as well. How do you work together? What is that you take away from the Genova experiences? What is that? And I, I would ask also the Genova colleagues, Barbara and others, what is that you take away from Magda Plata, and how does it work despite the, you know, probably quite significant uh, difference of context? Okay, we are uh, initiating our cooperation. We are in the, in the phase, the, the one phase, the, the first part. So we prioritize some uh, items that we think we need help to develop. And I think Genova do the same with another issues that Mar del Plata has a lot of experience. Mar del Plata is this, uh, I think it's the city that has more experience of tourism in Argentina. So they, priori they prioritize tourism and uh, some experience uh, about, um, uh, how can I say it? Uh, uh, I, I don't remember the word in English. It's uh, so los procesos amigables ambientales ¿sí? uh, in Spanish. So we, we, we are now trying to get that information into a plan for cooperate uh, through 2022 and part of 2023. Uh, Genova is coming to Madre Plata first. This, this year in 2022, and then we are going to Genova to participate in a huge agenda. But we think uh, we find a city that is really, really similar to ours. Uh, they have a, a very important port. They, are, they have a, well, this big cultural uh, history, uh, and, and we, they are a few steps above us in the digital citizen uh, thing. So 
we have a, a very big uh, expectation, but we are in the phase, in the first phase of this cooperation. I don't, thank you. I don't know if Barbara or somebody from Genoa would like to react on this. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, thank, uh, thanks, Santiago, uh, for, for being with us. Um, for what concerns Genoa, um, we are, as, as Santiago said, the Mar del Plata is a very touristic uh, city and they, has, uh, they have a very huge uh, experience on, uh, on tourism and on the management of tourism. And we are working a lot uh, on, uh, on that. Um, so our interest uh, um, also in for what concerned the um, knowledge uh, um, technology research center they are creating uh, is also on uh, the um, touristic uh, sector. Uh, we would like to 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 learn how to manage the the, the, the huge uh, quantity of tourists they receive every every year. So um, and then. Um, I think that the digitalization, the digital, is a kind of a cross-cutting theme because uh, as, as the pandemic uh, um, thought, taught us, uh, it has to be a tool that we have to, um, to have in our administration and we have to make a kind of a change in the, in the, in the managing through digital tools of different sector the cultural one and the, the touristic one um, so we are we are we are willing to 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 to, to know more on 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 this topic uh, and maybe linked for example to the tourism no, sure. sector um, we can um, uh, also, the, 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 the organization of a sustainable uh, mobility uh, plan with bicycle and so on. We are very new in this uh, in this part, but uh, maybe it could be also another another topic of uh, uh, common interest uh, with uh, with Mar del Plata. I have the impression maybe Edgardo wants to join the discussion. Would you like to Hi. give a comment? No, I just wanted to say that when we were doing the, the pairings, when we were deciding which city to pair together, uh, this were, uh, Genoa and uh, Marta Plata was an obvious choice, to be honest. <laughs> we were looking at some of the similarities in terms of history, uh, the importance of the tourism sector for both cities, uh, what Genoa wanted to work on, they were looking at to learn from tourism. Uh, uh, Mar del Plata had a lot of experience on it, and Mar del Plata wanted to work on digitalization. So each each city complemented each other quite well. So the choice of uh, actually pairing them together was pretty obvious uh, from the beginning, and we are glad at how this uh, cooperation is going so far. And uh, yes, I think the idea that digitalization is a cross-cutting issue that can address uh, the, from from my presentation to. Uh, social social challenges, urban poverty, to tourism, to a better provision of public services. Uh, it's, it's something we need to to highlight that uh, it's a cross cutting um, uh, topic. And it is, I just wanted to say that in the case of uh, how Mar del Plata and um, Genova complement each other in how, and how they are, we we are very very encouraged by how they are work, working together. Okay. Levent. Yeah, bye -bye. Levent, sorry, just to, to add one thing that mm -hmm. thanks to to uh, a digit project and the, uh, the possibility that Marseille give us gave us to to, to participate, uh, we can we have a, 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 a best practice uh, to uh, another best practice to, to share because uh, this this project is uh, actually on digitalization and on the relation of digitalization with citizens. So, thanks to this uh, uh, to this participation, uh, we can uh, um, share the, 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 our activity and uh, our our lesson learned in this project with uh, IURC and with uh, our one friend of uh, Mar del Plata. Thank you, Barbara. And I see one comment in the chat box, and this refers probably to what you mentioned, Santiago, about resilient public policies. And here, uh, there's Lodewijk from uh, Eurocities who says, uh, 
Uh, he's really interested in the idea of responsive policy constantly under development. Would you like to elaborate on this or it's enough if you read the, the article? Please join in. Yeah. There's, uh, there's not much. Uh, hi, uh, Lodek Nordside, by the way, from EuroCities, um, a European network of, uh, of cities. Um, no, it's, it's just basically what I said indeed in the chat that I really like this, this idea of, of um, having responsive policy based on the changing needs of society and the wishes of citizens. Um, and I just saw it was, I think it was number four or number three or four points that you have in that presentation. If there's anything that would you, that you would have uh, to share on these kind of practices or how you make sure that you uh, stay in touch with citizens and then collect the needs and then understand how uh, the context is changing and how that feeds back into the development of the policy, that will be something very interesting, I think, uh, for myself, but also for some of our members to uh, to learn about. Um, this and I would also add to this question if the digital digitalization can be a way to be more responsive, can this be the link? between uh, city government and uh, citizens. This is to Santiago and maybe also to Barbara. Yeah. Uh, I think we have this particular institution in Mar del Plata that is called ATIGMA. It's the association of businessmen, entrepreneurs, and also the, uh, the academic world. They, they work all together in this association. So we can work with them uh, collaboratively uh, with, with, um, um, with an agenda that we, we, we try to, to resolve some kind of problem. So uh, I think we, when we have this new reality with the COVID-19, we start talking to them how to uh, fix this kind of problem that made everyone stays at home. So we develop one or two, one or two tools uh, quickly um, and they, they try to uh, make us change how to work uh, with our um, employees. This was the, the hardest part, you know, the, the, the culture of our organization always tried not to change. So when we, when, we, when we speak with our employees and we try to explain how to make this change happen, uh, the, the private sector was a, a really, really uh, important associate because if you wanted to get results, we have to work with the private sector. But I think this, this is uh, very important for us. It's, it's kind of an, a, 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 um, an important point that we have this association. It's a model that I don't know if we have in another place in Argentina because uh, and, and they, they work all together and they compete uh, uh, always in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in trying to get new business. But in there, they work all together to try to make some of the, of, uh, to resolve uh, the city problems. It, it's, I think it's a, it's a nice jest that they have uh, to try to be part of our society. Yeah, thank you, Santiago. So this is a great insight and I'm really happy that we started a discussion about this. Uh, I think this is one of the objectives of this event as well. I would move over to EuroCities, to the realm of EuroCities. We have a few people uh, here with us from uh, EuroCities. Um, and I think we will start with uh, Mrs. Paula Buet, from, uh, who's the chair of the Knowledge Society Forum of uh, EuroCities and also with a hat in the Cities Coalition for Digital Rights. So again, maybe we bring back the whole perspective of digital divides and also access to information and uh, you know, the right to manage information. So, uh, and then I would keep this together, this session with, uh, to talk about in general about the EuroCities Knowledge Society Forum. So we, please bring your questions, write your questions in the chat and we can have a little discussion together with all of you afterwards. So Paula, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Um, I'm sorry to disappoint. I'm not the chair of your cities. I, I saw my colleagues um, smiling. I'm a project manager at Barcelona City Council. So I will bring a best practice from Barcelona, but um, I will leave the your cities stuff for my colleagues later. So yeah, I will be sharing my screen and hope I don't disappoint you even if I'm not. <laughs> The chair of the Oh, sorry. I think it's even better. Uh, okay. So, 
Let me know if you can see it. Yes. Okay. So yeah, as I said, my name is Paula Boet. I'm a project manager at Barcelona City Council where I work in projects mostly related to digital rights and the Citus Coalition for Digital Rights and Innovation. And today I will be um, sharing some best practices from Barcelona's digital policies so we can just um, foster knowledge and, and, and exchange um, best practices. And that will allow me to illustrate the direction Barcelona is taking when it comes to the digital transformation and uh, the, the services um, that the city provides in the digital realm. So um, to do so, I will first um, frame the current digital policies that are being developed in the city within a wider strategy and provide an overview of the main areas of attention and hot topics um, that are being developed. Then I will specifically um, address the way the city council is tackling the digital divide. And I will illustrate this with our um, policy pilot project, which is called Connect in Barcelona. And then I will um, briefly go over the way um, Barcelona City Council is approaching other aspects related to the digital transformation and emerging, emerging challenges, such as the um, AI governance. So um, to give you a brief overview, Barcelona um, has shifted from um, the tech-driven approach to the um, smart city and digital transformation to um, technological humanism and, and, and is advocating for a digital transition that puts people, residents, and their need at the center of, of, the, of the development. And here you might see, you might see some um, examples of actions, policies, or initiatives um, that Barcelona um, is pursuing regarding the digital. So that includes digital rights, digital inclusion, transformation, innovation. And I will be focusing on digital inclusion and as I said, um, the Connect Them pilot, but there are also some other um, topics such as, um, for instance, um, um, joining um, other cities in advocacy for digital rights and the Cities Coalition, or having developed a Fab Lab public network. And I'm happy to share information on all these initiatives um, later on or via email, we can do a follow-up. Um, and now I will focus on the, on the digital divide. So, um, with COVID-19 accelerating digitalization and implementing social inequalities, Barcelona City Council saw the, the need to, the, um, to map and, and detect and, and, and measure what constituted the digital divide in order to be able to do something about it and to take action. Um, so in autumn 2020, we carried out the digital device survey, um, which included more than 2,500 city residents and, and had the aim of analyzing and um, understanding and, up, and updating the data um, on the digital divide since the last available survey in 2016 and uh, understanding the impact of the pandemic in ICT use. Um, Sorry, Paula, for interrupting. I don't see your slides changing. Maybe you already wanted to oh, okay. step a few. It happens often that it's stuck on the first slides. Okay, I will stop sharing and share again to see that works. Thank you. It will work better. Now it is moving, yes. Perfect. Okay, let me know if something stops working so we can fix it. So, um, as I was saying, the, this divide was carried, I, this, this survey was carried out, and what was found out is that, um, surprisingly, most houses in the city do have an internet connection, so uh, a bit over the, uh, 90% of households have an internet connection, and, and only 8.1% of, of homes don't, don't have it. And um, the, 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 the number is uh, lower for the um, households who don't have access to the internet for economic reasons. So that um, really um, depicted uh, a positive situation. However, what was found out too was that um, age, gender, employment condition, and education level continue to condition ICT access and use. And, and also that um, income and, 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 and yeah, economic reasons and condition the access to devices. So lower um, income households have um, ac less access to, to, to better devices and have more access to touch screen rather than keyboard um, devices. So that, that was something that struck the attention of, 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 of the, the municipal government. And also um, because we, we saw that um, with COVID-19 uses related to basic services and, and being able to keep up with social and political and administrative life um, were, were um, conditioned. So um, 
with the health emergency, um, ICTUs increased by um, five. 5.6% and then go government procedures, remote working and remote learning were also incremented. So um, the key takeaway with all this um, was that um, even though the, the digital divide um, has been reduced overall and the numbers are good, um, the, this increase in internet use to the COVID-19 pandemic and the digitalization of, of highly sensitive and basic services made it really necessary to foster digital inclusion and specifically in those in areas where there are smaller um, vulnerable um, populations uh, with poor access, lack of skills or, or, or um, worse um, devices. So that's, that is where inclusion policy pilot comes in. And, and this pilot is called um, Connectem Barcelona, which would translate as um, Let's Connect Barcelona or Connecting Barcelona. And it is a... Um, uh, policy pilot uh, intended to take action um, action upon this reality analyzed in the in the survey and to tackle the digital divide in the most vulnerable areas of the city. And it has two main objectives, which are um, responding to the digital divide in a multi-dimensional way. So tackling the three main areas um, that condition um, the, the digital divide, which are connectivity, devices, and skills acquisition and also to test through an experimental methodology um, the effect of skills acquisition um, of, the, of this kind of programs um, in tackling the digital divide. So um, for this pilot, um, we wanted to extract evidence that um, providing this kind of training uh, was positive um, in addition to only providing connectivity or devices. Um, so that's why we created a, a control group um, and while all beneficiaries of this program um, received um, connectivity and devices, only this control group um, would receive training. So that would allow us to see whether that would be a useful thing to uh, um, when upscaling this kind of pilots. So, um, Connectem Barcelona um, has a multi-stakeholder approach, which means that it has involved um, uh, stakeholders from, from various sectors. Um, it has involved private telecommunications operators, which have provided quality internet connection free of cost. So for, for it, it has made available connection for families. Then the IT sector, which has um, facilitated um, devices which some have been bought and some have been donated. And then the third sector in really engaging in and making the program um, become rooted in the neighborhood. And then the public sector with other um, administrations administration such as the regional one or, or with, with facilitating access to IT training programs. Um, so this program was, um, well, no, it's is, is being, is being um, carried out in the Trinidad Nova neighborhood. Um, which is um, highlighted in blue in the map, as you can see. And this neighborhood was chosen because it's one of the areas with um, lower incomes. And also because it's, uh, it's located in the outskirts of, Bar of Barcelona. And it's one of the um, areas that social services detected that there were more, most uh, more people um, in a digital device situation. And where the our ICT agents program, which is a, a, a uh, program um, that aims to provide support in, in digital procedures and, and, and there's this there are these figures these agents that help um, people with with digital procedures um, detected the most interventions so um, this this is where, where we're developing it now um, however it's aimed to be scalable to the rest of the city and and, and as a, as a, a, a true policy to, to actually bridge the digital divide. So um, this policy pilot is intended, is, is, is aimed at people from 16 to 65 years old um, who are living or educating the, their children in the neighborhood. Um, and they are chosen through the social services so that um, the social services detects people in a situation of a, of a digital divide and they, they acknowledge it and then they can start participating in the, in the program. And what also um, is, stands out from the, this data is that women represent more than 80% of the beneficiaries of the program, and most of them are unemployed. So all, coming back to the data that the survey found out that, that really um, employment situation and gender condition access to, to digital technologies. 
And so the first thing that was needed to actually implement this program was to gain a deep knowledge of the neighborhood and, and the needs of the neighbors and to identify the, the key spots, the key facilities where um, the community could be engaged and could encounter the, 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 the public workers who were actually going to implement the, the program. And, and so um, the neighborhood house, the high school, the technological institute, the neighbors association and the local market were, were chosen as um, places where um, these ICT agents could be placed and they could provide um, direct support to citizens. And so then um, it was time to take action. Uh, in October 2021, um, the distribution of laptops started. Um, so and the, these laptops were distributed to members of the of, of the households according to their needs in in sessions um, where the where the worker public workers were directly um, handing out these laptops. Um, also um, during these sessions, broadband connections were installed, and um, it, some sort of, um, of IT training and, and and support was was also given. Um, here, it's important to highlight the key role of these ICT agents, which um, have a really close um, connection with the beneficiaries and who provide um, help with basic administrative procedures, such as applying for grants or subsidies or un unemployment, um, doing un unemployment procedures. Um, these uh, agents help users build a digital skills path and they connect them with um, pre-existing municipal training courses, um, which are provided by the local develop um, economic development agency Barcelona Activa, which go from zero, from like creating an email account to um, level 100, so becoming learning how to code and everything. So they are, these ICT agents are key for um, making these users enter the, the, this digital skills um, path. And also um, users of this of this um, program, when they complete the, the training, they can have access, they, they have access to the regional um, government IT certification. Um, and what was also important from this project, from this um, pilot, was that um, there was an ongoing evaluation of the control group to uh, really assess whether these um, IT training um, courses were, were use, useful and the support by IT agents was, was useful. So it's just to give you some figures and to, to start wrapping everything up. Um, I don't know if you see the whole thing. Maybe now we do. Okay, yes, so, we do. Until okay. six, yeah. Uh, okay, so um, up to 400 people who benefited from the project that we're currently carrying out, so they are still um, benefiting from it. Um, 300 laptops and 100 MiFi devices are have been funded by Barcelona City Council. 2000, uh, 2000, sorry, 250 SIMs with unlimited data have been donated by operators. And I really want to make an emphasis on that. There is unlimited data and the laptops can be used for any use. So it's not the classical program where you just give it for working or for studying. So users can really just watch Netflix. The thing is to really engage them through um, and, and letting them um, become aware that um, digitalization is is key for accessing, for instance, um, vaccination um, for, to reserve a slot to get vaccinated. So uh, it's not like we're restricting the use, but we're encouraging them to learn that why digitalization is useful. Then four ICT agents ha um, have been deployed in municipal facilities um, and more than 150 slots um, have been um, open, have been provided in, in the IT training courses. And there have been um, one evaluation ex ante to assess what the level of skills of the users were, uh, was, and then three exposed evaluations so that we can really um, get um, data and evidence that this is working. And okay, so that's uh, that's it for the the, the Connect Them policy pilot. Uh, but I. Before finishing my presentation, I would also like to place emphasis on the fact that the digital transformation really urges municipal governments to act to prevent future problems. And, and beyond the digital divide, which I have illustrated, um, Barcelona is also um, anticipating um, emerging, emerging challenges and, 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 and acting to govern, for instance, um, 
AI and automated decision makings. So in April 2021, and this might be a bit of a, of a random change of, 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 of topic, but I, I think it, it's worth it to mention you know, how, how, how governments have to be at the forefront of, of this governance of, of technologies to make sure they are aligned with rights and, and, and residents' needs. So in April 2021, we published an AI strategy to make sure that um, automated decision-making systems and, and and, and algorithms um, procured and developed by the city are aligned with human rights and with the principles that you see here, you know, te technical robustness, privacy and data and all of these um, principles. So the actions that we're gonna be fostering for the, uh, for the next years are for instance, developing pilot projects. So for instance, now there, there's um, a project on Barcelona's beaches to monitor um, um, the, the, the the capacity of the beaches. Um, then we're developing a municipal registry, such as the ones that have been already developed in Helsinki or Amsterdam. Then we're going to be updating the legal framework to keep it up to the to the emerging challenges, um, creating procurement clauses for for um, public contracting of, of AI systems. Then upskilling the staff of the of the of the municipality and and as a last instance of of also really wanting to cooperate with with, with other cities in, in building a, a model of, of technological humanism and where we have created the global observatory of urban AI and we're participating in in your cities as my colleagues will later on explain to really advocate for this kind of of technological transformation. So. I hope that was um, insightful, inspiring. I'm happy to, to share any, um, any details about the pilot I talked about or about other um, actions Barcelona is carrying out. And thank you for listening. Yes, thank you very much, Paula. This is actually very inspiring, as you, as you suggested. We have a few questions here, and I will also link some questions now. I wanted to wait a bit for later, but I think uh, questions are coming. So uh, Barbara's question, uh, is how long did it take from the idea of ICT agents and starting uh, of the action in the neighborhood? So how many days or months did the preparatory work take before you could enter into action with the ICT agents? Uh, so maybe Joan can can jump in here because um, uh, he's been maybe more involved in the in the pre phase. I I started working um, in the city like uh, in August, so I haven't been in that phase. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. uh, yeah, thank you, Paula. Uh, there are different things to, 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 to pay attention to here. There are different components of this project. Uh, the, one of the components is the, the, um, uh, the people that is helping these uh, agents or these people that is, is helping uh, citizens to, to use the, the digital services. This is an idea that uh, that started uh, around one year ago, uh, one year ago, one year before. Uh, started with a small pilot with uh, uh, two, three people, and then uh, uh, month later, uh, month later, uh, we use it. This we merge this 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 let's say service uh, with uh, Connect M Barcelona. So, so we we. We we combine the the, the access of uh, connection and devices with the, with the, this this uh, uh, these agents. Uh, regarding the the preparation of the connect in Barcelona, uh, I have to say that it uh, it takes uh, a lot of time. It takes uh, more than half uh, a year. Uh, talking. Uh, it's not only it's not only first of all of course you can imagine is to have the to have the to measure the, the the importance of the digital divide to understand it to to talk with uh, with uh, social care services in the city council and uh, and understand that we should we should uh, act on that no? it's a, it's a project that we cannot do as a city council we cannot do uh, alone and uh, we ask the participation of many actors, as uh, Paula has been uh, showing in the, in the in the presentation, and uh, and 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 to involve to engage all these agents uh, take a lot of time. Uh, mainly, mainly the telecom companies is uh, was the first the first uh, group of companies to to engage and to to, to deal with 
uh, let me say to deal with <laughs> to convince to convince but it was around around uh, been more than half a year of preparing for that that project thank you john um jan from hamburg is asking if uh you could say anything about the sustainability of uh, the project. Uh, and here I would add to my question about the sustainability of the skills because technology is evolving very quickly. So how can you assure that the people who got a kind of training, they can keep up with uh, you know, technology? I'm losing my grip on technology and I think many of us do constantly. And this connects a little bit to discussion we had er earlier with Marseille where they, they said they, they would like to elaborate more uh, the, the opportunity of citizens helping each other about technology as well. No? So how can you, how do you see the sustainability of these skills and also the sustainability of the, the program? Yeah, Paula, are you answering or? I would say or really um, showing, um, as I said before, no, maybe making it clear that technology what, why technology is useful. So it's not that, yeah, we give you this and we, 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 um, we're we technology geeks. So you need it for, um, for a procedure to continue up to date with political social life. So, so that's, that's one thing that this program is doing, that it's, it's introducing technology, not like, um, yeah, I give you these scores and then you don't do anything. You're just passive. Um, but this ICT agents really act uh, based on needs so that um, there's this um, awareness build that, that really technology is key for, for keeping up with, with, with life. And I, yeah, that's, that's what I would say. And, and I, I'd say um, the sustainability is also linked to um, this program being scalable later on so that we will see. We first need the data from this um, first pilot that we, we're doing now. I don't know if John, you would add anything. Yes, I, 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 yeah, I would add some, some uh, reflections on that. Uh, first of all, that, uh, that we dis we discovered uh, with uh, with uh, this this uh, uh, survey, uh, we discovered that uh, we have a digital divide. It's something that we we noted. We uh, we didn't pay attention to to the digital divide for for many years. So that was something at the beginning of the digital transformation years ago. But now, thanks to the pandemic, we discovered that there is a digital divide, and this is quite deep. It's a small, yeah, but it's deep. And it's making a difference. So, and and the problem of this uh, is is not only affordability of the internet connection. Is is that we need to 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 change the, the mindset of, of some people. So that is why this this program is not only acting with uh, it's acting with with all the the cultural environment and, and, and the people that is not using internet. Uh, uh, that is. Let's say a pilot. It has been said it's a pilot. It's a pilot, and and we, we, the, the 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 aim is not is not as I said is not uh, repeated. It's not to provide connection. Is to 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 change the mindset of these people. So uh, we think that after the or we hope <laughs> uh, we, uh, that these people uh, will change and. Uh, mm, uh, Change the way of seeing the, the use of, of technology and, and change the priorities on, on, on using the, 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 the technology. But, but also, uh, I'd like to, to link it with uh, some other things that uh, Paula has been saying, is that each time that uh, an emerging technology is coming and uh, we are adopting, no matter who, companies, uh, uh, city government is adopting a new uh, technology, an emerging technology is, is appearing a, a digital divide. So now we see it uh, in the case of artificial intelligence, and, and that links with what uh, Paula said before. Uh, so if we have to talk about uh, digital inclusion, maybe now we can focus on, on having the device and the skills and understanding the importance of being connected because it's is, is, a, is a key question to, to solve the, your future, to help you to solve your future. But in some days, in some, in some months, uh, artificial intelligence will be the next digital divide. So we need, uh, we, we will have then to act uh, or to measure this digital divide and to act to, to solve it. Not the access, maybe it's not the access that in, in some months is, is, to, is to help people to understand the importance of keeping attention of the, of the, of the data, um, paying attention to the, to the, to the, the uh, use of uh, different uh, digital resources in terms of, 
of privacy in terms of, uh, I don't know, um, you understand, all these kind of things. So the digital divide is something that is not fixed, a fixed question, it's something that is moving. Now we are acting here and it's a pilot uh, it's, uh, to, to face this. And in some months, in some, in some months or maybe a year, uh, we, will, we will be fighting the digital divide in another direction. No? Uh, part of our uh, artificial intelligence plan, uh, the artificial intelligence strategy approved by the, the, the city council, one part is devoted to uh, uh, raise the, the, the attention of citizens around the importance of uh, an ethical artificial intelligence. And this is the, these are the first actions to fight this coming digital divide. So. I hope this answers your, your question, but it's something that is dynamic. We try to, 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 to do it in, in an agile way. And now we are paying attention to that. And we know that in some months, it will be another, in another part. Yes, thank you, Joan. And there's another question from Edgardo. But before that, I would just connect to this because I see that Barcelona has been active on many projects. Uh, for example, I remember the project Decode, which is a project for data sovereignty. And how can you balance uh, between these projects, which are in a way taking data and digital access as a commons with your need to uh, collaborate with private companies, which definitely don't see the data as commons and have their own uh, private interest. And this links a little bit us back to the uh, comment from Hamburg from Birgit before about uh, do we want to keep Google servers or do we want to use European servers for our data? So all these questions together, but you seem to be very successful in you know, advancing an agenda on the ethical issues, but still keeping on board the private companies, which might be in a, in, in a conflict with uh, this idea of data and you know, whole digital access to uh, digital commons in general. Paula, if you, if you don't mind, I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer this, okay? Uh, it's, it's not it's not an easy question. That it's uh, it's it's in it's it's in that on the table of all the all the city CIOs. No, this question. Uh, uh, we in the city council uh, the, in the in the last year, I think is is we have been seeing the, the evolution of Barcelona last last years. Uh, we are we are in favor of of the, the digital sovereignty, what we call technological sovereignty. Uh, this is something that we have been always practicing since the beginning. And when I say say since the beginning, uh, the, the 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 history of ICT in the city council, the, of the use of ICT in the city council is, is really, really long. <laughs> started, I don't know, started before I was born. <laughs> so I uh, started in, uh, in, with the first mind frames in Spain. Barcelona was one of the, 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 the I think Madrid and Barcelona were the, the two first cities in Spain to have a mind frame. And that was uh, uh, late in the 15th. So in uh, before before 1960, uh, we had a, a mainframe in the city council. We start uh, and so we have been working on developing our own uh, ICT solutions uh, in order to have this this uh, let's say uh, technological sovereignty. We're we're practicing it. That it doesn't this doesn't does not means that that we don't don't work with uh, ICT companies, but uh, we, we contract the services and we buy services and we buy hardware and solutions, but we try also to, to have it at home, to develop it, to have the full control of it and, and we're using the, the, our services, uh, service. No? So, but this is what we are doing. And sometimes, sometimes uh, this is difficult and we have to also use uh, solutions in the cloud. No? But this is, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, our philosophy. Uh, I don't know. Uh, if I can okay. be, no, be no, more I precise. <laughs> but I, I, the I, constant I, effort, no? Each time that you, you yeah. have to develop a, a solution to solve a, a, a specific need of a department, you should take in, 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 into consideration this, this, this sovereignty. Maybe we can revisit this when we talk about Eurocities. Well, we talk about maybe European scale agenda, but before jumping over to your cities, I would just quote uh, Edgardo's question, uh, if you could, Paula, uh, expand on the set of indicators used when selecting the neighborhoods in Ovatrin that 
uh, telling you that uh, what combination of data was used, surveys, census data, etc. Yeah, so as I mentioned, it, it was um, based on the, the, the income, the, the average income in the neighborhood, with, with, um, um, which is the main indicator, and also um, from, the, from the opinions of the social um, services who do the, the groundwork and, and detected um, this, this situation of, of digital divide. And I, I will look at um, what exact indicators have been, have been um, used. But um, yeah, basically that and the, the, the income level and then the, this, um, this feedback from the ICT agents who detected the, the, the need to actually do something here. Yes, Sean. I will to remark something that that uh, for me it's uh, that for me it's 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 the key element of this project. That is, uh, so uh, this project is a common project uh, of uh, digital policy department, let's say, or digital innovation department, in which uh, Paula is working uh, uh, with uh, social care services in the city council, and and that it's. It's not a small thing <laughs> that is really important because it's the same time that the digital policy is not only uh, has not only uh, has not been um, decided to define it and launch it uh, from the perspective of the ICT people or the digital people, and uh, this is this is this is an important precedent or a good example of. Uh, whole things are changing so that when we talk about digital transformation, uh, that means that the, the digital, uh, that all the activities go digital and, and it's important to, to this kind of collaborations. We will, we will talk more about this uh, in the next presentation, but uh, I think that it was to, to, to highlight this, this collaboration without this collaboration, without the indicators uh, of uh, with the, the preliminary work of the social care services identifying identifying the, the, this, this uh, vulnerable people, uh, this, this project will have not been possible to, to, to go on. Yes, thank you, Joan. Very fascinating also in the, in the, in the light of, or in the perspective of European scale uh, policies. So I suggest that we, we close the Strictly Barcelona chapter and we move on to Eurocities. You've already heard a bit uh, de Weik Nordsee. Uh, who's a policy officer, officer of the Knowledge Society Forum, and you also heard uh, Joanne Butler, who is actually the technical chair of the Knowledge Society Forum, sorry for my mistake before, but also involved, as we see, in uh, International Affairs Department in the city thank of you. Barcelona. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So, so we change the hats now. No? <laughs> and uh, just let, let, me, let, let me say hello uh, on behalf of uh, your Cities Knowledge Society Forum. As you say, the, and as you can see in the first slide, Ludwig is the policy officer and I'm the, the technical chair. Uh, we are going to make the presentation hand by hand, hand, by hand uh, with Ludwig. Uh, Ludwig will, will explain more the, the, uh, the details of your cities. And I, I explain um, more of the dynamic of the of the KSF. Uh, but first, to to before before entering into into the presentation, I'm I'm very curious to know uh, how many people in this this uh, twenty nine uh, nine uh, nine attendees, how many of them are aware of Eurocities, are participating in Eurocities, or know Eurocities, hope Eurocities is, is, is working. So may I, may I have to, to raise your hand virtually, because there is a, 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 an icon to react. Can, can, you, can you raise your hand, all, 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 the, all the ones that are aware of uh, what is Eurocities or are part of Eurocities? So I see Barbara, I see Levente, I see Moxar, Gianluca, Valina, good, good. Many people is aware of, okay. Okay, good. And, and, and put hands down, uh, down and, 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 and how many of you are, are participating or have been participating sometime in, in KSF, uh, Knowledge Society Forum activities? Activities, Valina, Levente, Gijan Luca, of course. Good. Less, less people, less people. 
Okay, and, and another question that uh, is, is not is not is not silly. It could be, but no, it's not silly for me. This uh, down your hands. Okay, good. And how many of you have been participating in an international project with other cities? Moxar, Levente, Gianluca, of course. Uh, yeah, half, more or less half. Okay, okay. So let's let, let's go, Ludwig. Uh, Thank you, thank you very much. So you can down your hands. Good, good. Yeah, uh, I, yeah interesting. No, Ludwig? Yeah, no, definitely. Ludwig. Interesting, <laughs> good, good. So I think that we can start. Yeah. Uh, we plan that you, you will be the first, no, to talk? I think. I will, uh, yeah, I will just uh, take it away briefly and uh, I'll be sure to give you the, the floor um, afterwards. Good. I'm very sorry that I, I'm, uh, I'm trying to to put the, the screen um, or the presentation of full screen, but um, my laptop is on full memory. And when I just did it, um, everything crashed. So I tried and expanded as much as possible. Is it is it uh, visible anyway? I think so. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, thank you very much uh, uh, for all the um, interventions before here. And I was really entertained also by uh, Paula and then also Joanne's uh, specific contribution to that because it's a very, um, very relevant topic, I think. Um, the digital inclusion, it's also something that um, we, uh, we take into uh, special consideration in, um, in this presentation, or at least in sharing something about uh, the EuroCities network. Um, it's um, this session on the importance of the digitalization in European and extra European program networks. So I'm going to try and provide a little bit of a, of a background of what uh, EuroCities is and what we do as EuroCities, but then more specifically uh, towards the Knowledge Society Forum, indeed, where we work with uh, Johan, um, but uh, also um, many other cities, among which uh, Genoa. Um, Gianluca, good to see you here as well. Um, uh, yeah, to tackle or to address the topic of uh, digital inclusion, among other uh, topics. Um, so EuroCity is a, a network, a membership-based network uh, of European cities um, with more than 200,000 um, inhabitants in general. Um, it's a political platform in the first place. So we have mayors um, and deputy mayors as, uh, as, as signers or as, as the, the faces of the network. Um, and um, currently we connect over 200 uh, cities in 38 countries representing over um, 135 million people. Um, the network um, yeah, is, is, is focusing or centered around cities. Um, and uh, as there are many people here, either representing a city, working with a city or um, participate in projects that well, work to, to reach cities uh, everyday goals. Um, yeah, the, the work uh, that we do, our strategic framework is also focused around um, the topics and the challenges that are typically um, uh, relevant in the city context. Um, so we work with governments, um, city governments to address global challenges, um, but we also work to have people move, uh, move and live in a healthy environment. Um, it's been said before, people should be taking part in an inclusive society, not only digitally, but also socially or maybe culturally or economically. Um, so this is a very broad topic, not only digital. Um, and people should progress in prosperous local economies. Uh, we believe that people should make vibrant and open, open public spaces. Um, and we work to make city governments uh, fit for the future. Um, these are, of course, it's, uh, it's a broad agenda, so to say. Um, and they, uh, they cover different, um, different topics and domains. And um, although we are a political network, um, with uh, the mayors as a main representatives. We um, work uh, on an everyday basis with all our members uh, to achieve these goals that you see on this slide. Um, and for that, we organize ourselves in forums, in working groups, um, and we participate in projects. Um, so these goals that you just saw on the previous slide, they, um, yeah, they, they usually pertain to a certain uh, domain. Um, and we have uh, your cities. Um, our members organize themselves in, in forums where they work together on specific topics. So we have a culture forum that's currently chaired by the city of Dresden. We have an economic development forum that is chaired by Helsinki. A social affairs forum, which has a very broad agenda, um, is currently uh, chaired by, uh, by the city of Utrecht. And we cover environment um, topics, sustainability um, in the general sense with uh, Porto. 
as a chair and we have a specific uh, form on mobility and each of these forms have uh, separate working groups underneath them and the cities that are present there um, can decide to gather around a certain topic within the domain uh, to either exchange, uh, exchange uh, experiences and to uh, share best practices or maybe to uh, increase capabilities um, and um, uh, knowledge, the Knowledge Society Forum is, is one of these working groups that we have as well, and I think it is the most uh, relevant one uh, for, uh, for the digitalization topics. Um, yeah, this forum of digital cities is currently chaired by Barcelona, and on the day-to-day -day basis, like I said, and like all the forums and all the working groups, we work with uh, technical contacts, uh, the contact officers from the cities, and in the Knowledge Society Forum, this usually means that we work with uh, the chief data officers, the chief intelligence officers, um, security officers, um, and um, data scientists and everyone that's really on the on the expert um, the expert in the management side of the digital topics within the city which allows us to work on um, uh, on the tangible topics uh, besides uh, the policy uh, and the advocacy work um, just uh, that's in, in in a nutshell how we organize as your cities as an organization um, and I'd like to give the floor to um, yeah to Joanne to uh, more specifically speak about what we do within uh, the Knowledge Society yeah. Forum. Yeah, the, the Knowledge Society Forum, uh, um, we, we started many years ago, uh, that it was in a, a, a late 80s or beginning of 90s, uh, with, a, with a network of cities that was called Telecities. And we started uh, collaborating with different cities. It was Vienna, it was uh, uh, Manchester and uh, Helsinki, you know, and uh, The Hague, and uh, many other cities. But we started collaborating uh, around around digital policies. No? Uh, that moment was the the the, 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 the um, raising the, the interest of using technology and applying the technology for cities and change the way of providing uh, services to citizens and information. Starting with information, of course, and we 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 created this network. And and years ago, we we we, we joined the Euro Cities and and become a, a, a forum. Uh, uh, side by side with with uh, culture and economic development and development uh, or all other forums. No, the Knowledge Society Forum is, uh, is is the forum of the of the digital cities. All uh, things related with uh, technology, with digital and cities, uh, as we is, is discussed here, or has been uh, uh, we have been discussing all these things here for many years. But uh, now we, we, we realize that, that uh, as I said before, also in the presentation, uh, in the Ballard presentation, that uh, digital is everywhere and, and it's affecting all the areas of the, of the city council. So uh, we need to stress uh, and the collaboration with other forums because this division, these silos, uh, doesn't make sense at that moment. No? Uh, so we need to, 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 to work in a, in a different way. Uh, we are, in the Knowledge Society Forum, we are we are working. Uh, with, yes, thank you. Uh, we are organized in uh, it's it's a, it's it's a forum with around fifty cities participating. Uh, some cities participate on the week, on the year. Uh, some others are more engaged and participating in uh, different activities. Some and, and and a few are are participating uh, in in all the activities. So it depends of uh, also the priorities of the cities. Uh, how the cities understand the international collaboration. That's why I asked you before to raise your hand in order to know um, to which extent your cities are uh, understanding how important is the international collaboration between uh, cities uh, in order to, to have, uh, to define better public policies or to provide better public services to citizens or to advocate in front of the, the, the European institutions no? uh, to lobby in some way in, in the world. No? Uh, we are organized in, inside Eurocities in, in a steering a knowledge society forum in a steering committee that is uh, formed by, by the, the policy officers, uh, uh, the chair, the vice chair, who is uh, Rotterdam at that moment, and, uh, and uh, the working group leaders. Uh, then uh, we have uh, different working groups that are thematic and are working with, uh, in that case, uh, one of the working groups is led by, by Gianluca. 
um, they are dealing with uh, with uh, digital citizenship, all the things related with the technology and citizens. Others, uh, the, we have another working group on data and another group on on, uh, on uh, emerging technologies, and then we have. We, we, we understood that, 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 uh, that as the technology is evolving in so quickly, we need to also to have another way to react in front of the, the, those changes and to understand as soon as possible, to take uh, and uh, understand the technology as soon as possible. Uh, and then we created the task forces. Task forces are a small, a small uh, the groups of cities uh, that are uh, interested on, on tackling a specific uh, issue related uh, with an importance uh, are timely important, so it may, maybe are important because there is a, there is something happening in, at the European institutions, or there is something happening in the market, and we need to understand very quickly and react very quickly. And then we create task forces. We have task forces. Uh, we had task forces because it's something that we create. We uh, they work and they, then they disappear, and that could could take uh, six months or three months or. Or, or, or a year maximum, no, more or less. And we had task forces around uh, to, to, to work on 5G, for instance, the deployment of 5G in cities, that it was one issue, and is still one issue, an important issue for cities. Uh, we had uh, task forces dealing with, with uh, smart cities, uh, with uh, data. Uh, so each time that the European Commission is, uh, is uh, having an initiative uh, legislative that uh, has to do with uh, digital, we try to create a task force in order to follow and react accordingly. Um, also, we understood that we have to act at different levels. So it's not, uh, it's, uh, it's not a network, uh, it's, a, it's a network that, that prioritizes the political action, but we need to act at different levels also and provide uh, solutions for, for CIOs, for, for, for technology managers uh, in cities, but also for practitioners in cities. Uh, so we need to, uh, we, we, we're creating uh, communities of practice in order to put together people with a common uh, work, common responsibility in the cities. Uh, we created the, 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 the community of practice uh, around cyber security uh, to put together and create this, this, this group of people sharing that is really, 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 uh, experienced in uh, and focused on, on cyber security uh, put together and, and create these links help to create these links between the different cities between the experts of different cities and it is part of all is uh, our our work no? uh, of course we have uh, conferences we have uh, one annual conference uh, this uh, next year will be in madrid last year was uh, in ren uh, and uh, two years ago was in manchester and three years ago was in Cologne. So we are, each, year, each year we have uh, an annual event in which we, we try to meet together. Unfortunately, last, <laughs> last two years it has been impossible to meet physically, but uh, to meet together and, 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 and share views, share problems, try to, to work together. No? We develop collaborative projects inside the forum. And that is projects that we develop uh, hand by hand with, with uh, different cities. No? It's... Uh, could be an European project, yes, could be, but uh, not necessarily uh, an European project. When I say an European project, I mean a project uh, fo uh, founded by the European uh, Commission. No? But also we work on that. So we help cities, uh, we help all our members to understand, to be aware of the calls uh, that the European Commission is launching and uh, we are uh, leading or participating as Eurocities uh, together with other cities, uh, participate in different European projects. So the European funding is a part of our, of our work. Next slide, please. So, so uh, yeah, we're doing a lot of things, but which is the focus? The focus is mainly this multi-level uh, action that's, uh, that I said before. Work in the political action, stress, stress the, 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 the political action. So we will we would like to be the, the gateway, the, the, the let's say the, the, the to, to convey the, 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 the voice of cities to the European Commission, to the European institutions, and, and have a strong political action in front of the European 
European institutions. And that has to do with, uh, for instance, just to put some examples, for instance, with the Digital Service Act, what is happening with the new regulation on the short-term rental, uh, because it has to do with the data exchange between the digital platforms, and this is really important, how Airbnb is sharing information with cities, with cities, sorry, um, uh, with the Data Act, or with the Artificial Intelligence Act, or with the cybersecurity uh, um, directive that is that is also into discussion at that moment. No? So we have different uh, different opportunities, and I would say not opportunities. We have different needs to act politically in front of the European institutions as cities. Okay. Then then uh, we have we we are we are doing this uh, exercise of collective intelligence. And that is going beyond the change of good practices. Of course, we are doing a change. We are changing good practices. And this is something that the network will do always. But we should go beyond that. We should, we should uh, after changing good practices, we need to, to, to develop common solutions uh, uh, to, the, to the problems that all of us we have and uh, try to, 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 to develop solutions and can scale up not reinvent the wheel in each city hmm? or not just do, doing pilots, working uh, sustainable solutions. Uh, and and uh, the last point I, I have been talking before, so I, I, I will just skip uh, this one. No? Is that for me, uh, Ludwig? Um, no, I, I'll, uh, I'll just go uh, briefly through it because I think it's indeed, it's, it's quite clear that, that there's a way of, of working together with all the cities in, uh, in the network. Um, but then indeed, so what is this digitization agenda in, in the European context and what is, what is currently relevant? And like you said, and uh, you mentioned these task forces that organize themselves around um, the, the, the topical legislative proposals or uh, the policy agenda of the European uh, Commission that is uh, in development. And currently we see that there's an, uh, yeah, a European agenda that focuses strictly on or very, um, uh, very strongly on artificial intelligence. Uh, bringing out an artificial intelligence act or a proposal for it that um, involves a lot of obligations and responsibilities for the users and providers of artificial intelligence, which is in one hand very uh, interesting and very relevant for cities because it's about safeguarding citizens' uh, interests and the public interest as well. On the other hand, it will also mean that um, uh, yeah, that cities um, will need to work on developing their uh, their capabilities. Um, and developing the resources to be able to um, uh, to adhere to these obligations and to fulfill these responsibilities. If you're using um, uh, AI and you will need to be transparent about it and understand the impact and the quality of the data um, and have um, um, compliance Life mechanisms training. in place to be able to do it safely, uh, this means uh, something for the operation of the city. Um, and the task forces that we have, for example, now on uh, artificial intelligence works to understand the impact of the uh, uh, artificial intelligence Intelligence Act on, on cities um, in the daily operation, but also um, from a legal point of view. Um, and the data strategy from the European uh, Union, it's, it's basically the same. It focuses on um, the availability and the use of, uh, of data within, uh, within Europe. Um, and as cities, well, generally we, we, we can say that we um, act as, um, um, as a hub in the triple helix model, so to say, we connect businesses, we connect universities, we are a public administration, and um, there's so much data that is uh, that is flowing through city uh, ecosystems. Um, and the European data strategy is focusing on making available business data um, and improving the access to, to data held by businesses, which is interesting for cities because this data um, has value, potential value for cities to improve on its services, uh, to develop new services, but also to, um, uh, to validate policies, for example. Um, and there's also uh, two other, there's a data governance uh, act that should be, uh, uh, that should allow um, individuals to more safely uh, share their uh, personal data or the data that they, um, uh, uh, for example, um, uh, gather when using services by private companies. Um, and there will also be um, initi initiatives on open data sets um, where uh, public administrations are going to be expected to open up high value data sets for example, related to utility, waste management, um, energy, water management, and 
this is very interesting because it will provide this data ecosystem with more input and more potential mm, gas, so to say. Um, but um, it will also again hold new obligations for uh, for cities and new responsibilities for doing um, these kind of activities in a responsible way. Um, and we try to help uh, the cities within um, um, uh, uh, the the forum to address this, but actually more important um, from my point of view is that the cities um, proactively and independently reach out uh, to the other cities in the network to speak about these um, developments, to understand what they are already doing, um, but also understand what they can do to help each other. Um, more specifically on digital inclusion, and there's the digital decade um, by the European Commission. Um, and I think it really resonates with what I heard before as well by a presentation by, uh, by Paula, um, that it is about making sure that digital works for everyone. Um, and what do we need to do as a European Union um, to make sure that we don't leave anyone behind? And this digital decade is about skills, it's about connectivity, it's about the quality of the connectivity. Um, there's so much that we need to do in the coming 10 years, so to say, to become, um, uh, yeah, to, to make this our digital decade. Um, and um, yeah, there's in 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 this, in, um, in uh, the forum, especially also Gianluca will be able to tell more about that maybe in the last well, last minutes. I'm going to try and make it make it short. Um, that the working group on digital citizenship is also working on this. Um, it's it's cities converging around uh, also best practices. What do you undertake? It's comparing uh, comparable to what we heard in the beginning of this uh, of, of of this meeting. Um, what is happening on the local level to make sure citizens are involved um, and how can you do that in a good way um, and is it maybe possible to, uh, to develop projects uh, to do so. Um, there's a couple of examples um, of projects that cities in our network are currently working on. Um, I am not, uh, unfortunately, not the, the right person to, uh, to, to go into detail on all these projects, but um, if you are interested in more information on them, um, I either encourage you to check out the websites or send me an email afterwards, because I'll be happy to uh, connect you to all the cities that are involved. Um, the City Measure project has started uh, four or five months ago, um, and it's a European funded project that focuses on uh, citizen measurement uh, to create smart, sustainable and inclusive cities. And um, I think that uh, Edgardo uh, has already mentioned also the, the topic of data collection, uh, which is important in, in a smart city. Um, data, it's, 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 uh, it can be very effective and very useful for many things. And City Measure is actually looking at the collection of data through citizen participation, whether it is about um, noise pollution, air pollution, um, and mobility traffic, uh, mobility transfers, um, and, and infrastructure usage. Um, and there are three working groups that are currently uh, developing um, um, with cities and citizens um, instruments uh, to ensure the digital inclusivity of such measurement projects. So to help them understand um, how they can contribute to develop the competences of citizens uh, to participate in measurement projects, but also a man, an instrument to, um, uh, to help policymakers um, use the data to inform behavioral change, because measuring is one thing and having the data is one thing, but then making sure that it leads to change is, a, is another thing. Um, another project that we have is, um, is user centricities. It's also funded through the EU, and I think uh, we have 12 or 13 cities participating there. Uh, the other chair of the digital citizenship uh, uh, working group, uh, Murcia, is also closely involved there. And this is about um, user centricity. So if you talk about inclusion, it's also about putting the citizen um, and the user first. Um, and in user centricity, uh, cities are working to um, translate uh, the e-governance principles from the talent declaration from two years ago or 2018, I think, to the local level. Um, the talent declaration has many useful and, and valuable um, uh, principles for user centricity, but they've been um, pronounced uh, on the national level, the member state level, um, and some cities found it very difficult to make these operational um, and translate them to the local level, and user centricities will work um, in the coming two years to uh, provide uh, tools for cities to uh, help them implement these centricity principles on the local level. Um, during the Smart City Expo World Congress, we uh, worked with Barcelona as well and with Bordeaux, um, uh, also with the European Parliament, uh, to talk about uh, digital inclusion um, following um, uh, the post-COVID era or thinking about it in the post-COVID era. For me, what stuck uh, really 
following this this uh, this session was um, the researcher um, from a Medici project who, who joined, who said that actually the COVID-19 uh, pandemic is actually the perfect storm for the digital divide. Those who have um, um, connectivity um, uh, will actually be able to leverage and, and, and benefit from this connectivity and skills uh, even more than before, and those without will be um, yeah will be impacted even even more um, than in a normal situation with this accelerated digital transformation. So it was a very interesting way to look at it from a more political and um, and advocacy point of view. And during the annual forum meeting last year, um, we uh, had a title "Building Trust with Citizens," um, and we learned, for example, how Munich is implementing citizen engagement platforms to uh, facilitate conversations between. Uh, city officials and, uh, and citizens, uh, while ESPO was uh, talking about their uh, data transparency uh, policies and where they want to show citizens how they are using their data, where they are doing that and with what purpose. Um, so it's definitely a topic that is on the minds, um, not only of the European Commission in their policy, but also definitely on the, on the, yeah, on the network, um, on the cities in our network, as I see it. Um, yeah. Do you want to say anything that yeah. you would like to... Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so you have been saying what is hot at the moment in Europe in terms of digital. So it's, it's digital inclusion due to the pandemic. Uh, we discovered it again. Uh, it's emer in emerging technologies, how we uh, were able to, 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 to extract all the potentialities of the emerging technologies for the benefit of citizens. So, so doing it in an ethical way. And that um, brings me to the, to the digital rights. is also a both word. Uh, uh, everybody's talking now about the digital rights, the, and, and finally data. Data is, is in, in, in three of the four conversations with the European Commission, data is there. Data is in the Data Service Act, data is in the short-term rental uh, uh, new regulation, data is in the common data spaces, data is everywhere. Data uh, will be, or is, is, we have to see data as the new, digital public space and that's why uh, why the european commission is uh, is talking about the common data spaces and this is a, a central a part of the of the the data strategy of the european commission um so these four other the, the the hot topics in europe at the moment and in the network in the knowledge society forum the digital cities forum of course the same. We're acting and reacting and working on those topics. No? Just to put you an example, uh, more examples, because uh, Ludwig has been uh, talking extensively about it. So uh, the, the, we recently created a task force to deal with uh, digital twins, to work around digital twins. What is digital twins? Digital twins is, is an implementation. It's, a, it's an example of the potentiality of data for, cities, for city management. So digital twins is is, is something that puts into practice all the all the all the all the, all the tools we had uh, beef, uh, uh, around data. Hmm. Uh, years ago, in 2018, we started in, in, the, in the forum to we realized the, the importance of data for, for, for the city management, and we work on on the digital uh, data principles and the citizens data principles, what we call the. the the, the, the Charter of Digital Data Principles. And it was approved in, in uh, early 2019. Uh, but it's about, it's about, it was just before, before talking uh, so intensively uh, uh, about the, the digital rights and uh, we identified data as a, as a key element. Now, now in, uh, in the City Coalition for Digital Rights, data is one. Of the of the components of these digital rights, so uh, the City Coalition for Digital Rights was created uh, three three four years ago. Um, Paula can help on that, uh, but uh, it was created by was launched by, by Barcelona, Amsterdam, and, and New York. But uh, Euro cities joined joined it uh, since the beginning. So joined it, uh, forces with these three cities. But not only with three, these three cities, also with UN Habitat and UCLG, that is a worldwide network of cities and local governments. So we are talking about the biggest networks of uh, cities and municipalities in the world. So we are joining forces because, because um, the digital rights is not something that we can deal with 
only under a Europe perspective. We need to, 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 to tackle it with a global perspective. And that is why we are not doing inside Euro cities that could have been that, that way, but no, we are doing together with American, with Asian, with cities around the world and with organizations that are global. Mm -hmm. um, at that moment, the city coalition is, is providing uh, tangible results uh, it's providing a framework for, for, for managing the, 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 the governance of the digital rights in cities, that it's a, a document that it was to, 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 to read and, uh, and, and to read carefully because it's uh, full of uh, examples uh, of projects that are working uh, in, in cities around the world and, and, and uh, examples to, 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 to reuse in other cities. Uh, or to inspire uh, in your policies to protect the, the, the digital rights of citizens. So could you change the slide? Yes. Um, shall we go to uh, look at the time? Shall we just yes. go to the last or the semi last slide uh, for you? Yeah, uh, I think slides? so. Yeah? I think so. Yes. yes Good. Yeah. So then this is, uh, <laughs> this is for you. Yeah. So it's for me again. So I'll conclude the, the our presentation. I, I, we tried uh, Ludwig and me to 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 just to to stress what we are doing, and mainly mainly what we are trying is 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 put together cities in order to help each other. So cities help cities. It's not a staff that is helping cities. It's not some someone else that is helping cities. No, we are. Uh, cities and we are helping other cities. We learn from each other. That is important, and and we share we share we share challenge and um, share solutions. Cities are not competing. There is there is enough room for everywhere. Uh, what we need is to share the, the problems and, and, and sorry to, to share the solutions and to build common solutions right? to build knowledge together and, and and common solutions that can scale up and can be easily apply it in, in, all, in all cities. Uh, so in consequence, we grow together. And this is our, our aim to, to grow together, all the cities help, help uh, each other. No? And uh, in terms of uh, political terms, we advocate for more, more uh, competences for cities and to have uh, better funding for cities. So you know, competences and funding should go together. And uh, we advocate for the role of cities in building back better, but not only in big, uh, when, when I, we say building back better, don't think only uh, about the, the, the COVID uh, recovery. No, it's, it's not only this, it's in building the future. So the cities should be in the, in the table in which uh, states, governments, and all other uh, global actors are, uh, are um, taking uh, the, the main decisions. For the, for the future of us. So cities should be there, should be in, in those tables, should participate. Just the last word, take into account that if uh, nobody will, will, will uh, ask uh, the European institutions to change uh, a draft of, uh, let's say, uh, the Digital Service Act or the Data Act in favor of cities, nobody else than uh, that uh, Euro cities or a city uh, a network of, of cities. So, uh, if we would like to 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 be, uh, we would like to to change things at the European level. We we need to, to join forces in 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 a place like Euro cities, and that's all. Thank you, and I hope to see you uh, there. Thank you very much, John. Thank you very much, Ludwig. Um, we have only time for just one very quick intervention by Marianne from Debrecen, who's uh, Debrecen is part of the Digital Citizenship Working Group. So I invite her to very quickly just to share with us how, what do, what do you do in the Digital uh, Citizenship Working Group? And then we will get back one day to, of course, to this uh, European scale challenge, which I think is very important. And I'm very happy that this is one of the conclusions of our session today. Marianne. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you, Levanta. Uh, it's nice to meet you all. Um, um, let me introduce myself, but actually I was working, uh, I had a working background with uh, Levanta, Gianluca, Barbara, 
and Lodevic uh, um, many, many years ago. Um, as we have working together in, in, during the inter Interactive Cities project uh, by the Urbex program. Um, and um, so um, our, um, our role uh, in the digital uh, citizenship uh, uh, was uh, due to the, um, the effective actions uh, we have uh, done in the Interactive Cities uh, project. And um, as we had, uh, we created an integrated action plan about how to digitalize the, the city, and we uh, focused on the business uh, issues. Uh, so one of the main target was uh, to create a, a digital Google map uh, for the city, uh, where we can locate all the relevant uh, service providers uh, with relevant information, update their opening hours, the email addresses, uh, uh, just um, um, for uh, in, in that reason that uh, people who wants to find uh, some kind of services, uh, you know, they wouldn't uh, find any uh, fake uh, information. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't uh, work out after the interactive cities have uh, finished. Uh, so that's why um, we had to find uh, some other uh, stakeholders uh, from the city and the Milius, uh, the city library uh, are very active in the field of digital literacy. Um, can I share, uh, I will share some um, presentation because I uh, didn't uh, receive um, 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 data, photos, and everything uh, just uh, in, in the past uh, 10 uh, minutes. Uh, so I can share uh, with you information that, uh, so you can see that the Britain uh, is, um, uh, hang on. Uh, so um, the Britain is uh, situated in the Central European area. So you know that uh, Levante is uh, Hungarian as well. Uh, so we we uh, are located in the uh, uh, at the eastern border of Hungary. Uh, our city is uh, uh, is experienced uh, an economic blooming, and uh, we have a culture, a very strong uh, cultural uh, um, identity. Uh, uh, as uh, this uh, city is a spiritual center, uh, we have a uh, um, so, for example, this uh, uh, city library uh, has a uh, has a role uh, for the social inclusion uh, of the citizens and uh, of the in internationals. Due to the economy uh, blooming, we have uh, many international company based their uh, factories in Debrecen, and uh, um, more international people moved here. So, uh, we have a very strong. Uh, uh, focus on the communities and the digital how to digitalize everything and um, uh, so um, the mail is uh, this uh, uh, city library uh, uh, covers um, all the administrative area um, within the city and they provide uh, different uh, activities for the citizens, for the residents, and they want to reach uh, those people who, for example, live in, in a homestead, uh, which doesn't have even a, an internet access. So uh, when, uh, um, you know, uh, during this era, uh, you face with, uh, with a challenge that somebody doesn't know how to use an internet, so they created a, con a digital a kind of um, content library uh, which has uh, a Wi-Fi uh, instruments inside. So it, they developed uh, this, uh, they started to develop uh, uh, this, um, this kind of container library in 2019. I have presented it in, in Cologne. And um, uh, right now, uh, and they managed to uh, make it action. So they managed to, uh, to deliver uh, internet uh, and, uh, and library and uh, service, uh, services and uh, other uh, um, 
activities for those people who live uh, outside of the city, outside the, in an area where there is not uh, any internet access. So uh, I can share another uh, picture. Um, just a second. Um, So, for example, it uh, happened. In, this is an area where uh, the people started to move out. Uh, you know, it's a calm area. Uh, it's a nice green environment, and uh, but the internet access uh, it has some difficulties sometimes. So, for example, they uh, uh, they have this container mobile uh, container library. So they. Uh, bring it to the to the people to the square of the uh, of that area, and they organize meetings and uh, programs for the kids, uh, for the adult people, for example. And we have a very strong uh, uh, cultural uh, identity for folk music as well. So um, I have received these pictures just uh, uh, thirty minutes ago, and uh, um, and besides. Uh, so this one, uh, this photo uh, was taken in, uh, uh, within the city because uh, the uh, cultural uh, uh, wise mayor uh, realized that uh, it will be um, a, a good message for the young people to have this uh, um, this container library, and they would, uh, and, and you know, uh, because. Uh, the young people has a problem that they uh, they stick to the the gamer um, activities, so they they wanted to show them that you know that uh, to read is very important as as important as uh, uh, as uh, to be in this virtual world. Um, and um, I would like to share uh, another uh, a smart city uh, page. Um, because um, in 2020, um, our uh, colleague from the smart city uh, department, uh, they started to uh, they started to implement uh, those actions uh, we have uh, we have described in the in interactive cities inter integration uh, in. No. Mm -hmm. Uh, integrated action plan. In integrated action plan. Thank you, Lamenta. So uh, we have created um, uh, this uh, um, this website, not, uh, not website. This uh, Google Map. Uh, um, this is the Google Map, and uh, the base of the Google Map was that uh, that a lot of volunteers, people were involved in this program. Um, uh, uh, these people from the high school. Uh, students very involved. They had to collect the data for the GPS data uh, from uh, uh, for the whole um, commercial services and uh, for uh, every kind of services within the city, within the downtown. And uh, we have created a, a Google uh, an Excel sheet, and uh, this actual Excel sheet were uh, sent to the Google. And the Google, uh, implant, uh, you know, installed in, under their Google Map. So right now, if somebody wants to find, uh, for example, um, um, whatever, uh, an, a shop or uh, any other thing, so they have uh, got to know the the uh, correct data. So this was one of the action. It's. Uh, which can uh, have uh, some inclusion to this uh, digital um, yeah, literacy of the city. And we also have, uh, for example, um, a waste community-based map uh, application. We had a campaign that, uh, you know, to uh, convince the people to use the ways to find the, and the optimal way how to, uh, to move uh, in the city by car or uh, uh, with other transport. And uh, we have a, a national. We have a, a company uh, called National Instruments, and they started to make a mentor program for kids uh, in the school. Uh, they started to. Uh, they developed a, a kind of uh, um, a mathematical uh, code uh, game 
and they uh, promote it in, in the city. And uh, we also had an, um, another um, activity and in, um, I don't know, uh, does it belong to this, this uh, digital citizenship? That um, uh, yesterday, the city of Debrecen has launched their international core plan. Uh, that means uh, we have created a, a Debrecen, uh, an international portal for the people, uh, international people who live in Debrecen. So this, po this portal aim uh, is to find all the uh, necessary information uh, for those who's going to come uh, to live in Debrecen for short, you know, couple of months or for a longer uh, period, uh, like uh, years. Uh, so um, I think it's, it's a good thing that we uh, could make a, um, a kind of uh, uh, international portal like uh, Helsinki has one, uh, my Helsinki, like uh, I love Amsterdam has one, Copenhagen uh, has uh, one kind of, uh, um, and Groningen as well. So uh, we managed to, to do it uh, through a, another urban project called uh, Welcoming International Talent. And um, our activity was highlighted within the urban uh, uh, program as well. So um, I think Thank you, Marianne. it yeah. was enough for, uh, I don't know. We had a little insight into all the activities you have within well, within your city, but also in relationship with the Digital Citizenship Working Group. So I think people are slowly leaving us because it's, we are beyond time and I also have to leave, I'm sorry. I had to leave 10 minutes ago. Uh, but I would like to thank you all for this really nice uh, set of contributions. I really, I'm really happy that we moved between you know, very pragmatic, very technical details to the, the main, the key political challenges that we face uh, in regards to digitalization in our cities, but also at the European level. And I think all just going back to uh, Joan's comment on cities uh, can have to work together, cities have to help uh, each other and bring this the knowledge to European level and create a collective intelligence. I think the events of this kind and the EU Digit and other projects like this are actually contributing to this collective intelligence. And uh, now I think it's our task to push this co collective intelligence also through uh, politics and the EU level politics and local politics. And I guess this will uh, help us create more inclusive and more, uh, well, more transparent societies, so societies for our future. So I would like to give back the word to our hosts, Barbara and the Genova team. And I would like to thank you again for the amazing contributions. And I believe that uh, as the session was recorded, hopefully we can uh, revisit, re-watch, re-listen to these nice uh, contributions. Thank you, Levante. Thank you all. Um, I was. Uh, I just want to to thank uh, all of you for staying with us, for um, putting question in in the chat and be and be active. Um, I hope you had enjoyed and you, we had a really a great, a, a good exchange of uh, activities of impression and, uh, and of knowledge and on experience. Uh, I will uh, only leave a very last uh, minute um, um, goodbye from, uh, from Gianluca Saba, that is the head of international uh, office. And, uh, uh, I will leave him the for, for a very, very, very last uh, uh, greeting. Absolutely, Barbara. Uh, first of all, thank you, Barbara, for replacing me in many, many moments of the conference today because I've had a terrible day. I'm so, so sorry, but I try to follow most of the, of the works. Thank you, Levente, for the moderation. Thank you. To all the speakers, uh, my great friends, Marianne, Joanne, Ludwig, and all the other colleagues that attended the meeting today. I think we had uh, fruitful exchanges, interesting insights. As Joanne uh, wrote in the chat, it's probably the moment to, to, to do a step forward and to, to make some uh, 
cross-cutting uh, uh, actions between the different networks or projects that are working on basically on the same topics. And, uh, and the, my intention was actually this one, so to, to create bridges and not to, and not to work uh, 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 in silos, because uh, in Eurocities we always said, break the silos. This is a, a motto of the network, but I think it could be <laughs> adapted to all the, the work in the city councils and uh, in the relation among partners. So uh, thank you again. And uh, with Levente, no, we, we won't see tomorrow, but uh, uh, I think Levente, this has been a great occasion for us to, to keep in touch again and hopefully to, to develop new collaborations for the future. So see you tomorrow uh, for the last session, for the latest sessions, 9.30, Barbara, correct? We will have uh, uh, the session dedicated to citizen service and then, uh, and then uh, uh, the internal uh, uh, steering committee just for the project partners. Thank you so much. Have a nice evening and see you tomorrow. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.